Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Game Forecast. This is our weekly game podcast, or you know, bi-weekly sometimes, where we get together and chat about everything we've been playing and all the new news for the week. My name is Josh, aka Bottleworks. I'm here with Olive Meister Will. Hello, Sam Sanner. Hello, it's me, Sam. And our good friend Matt Tomatosaurus. How you doing, man? Yo, I'm doing good. Welcome back, welcome back. You've been on a few times before, so you know this whole song and dance at this point. Yeah. yeah uh, you're, you're like the guy that we've invited round, and now you have to go get your own drink. Like, you're past <laughs> the point yeah. of like, do you want a drink, Matt? It's like, no, just go get it yourself. You've been here yeah, enough. You, you know, know the where the fridge, fridge is. is. Oh, he said yeah, the same thing. Like <laughs> I, think, I think I'm exclusively like that with you, Sam. I think you're the only person whose house I go around, and I'm like, I'm going to help myself. <laughs> Well, special oh, guests dear. get special privileges. So, what have you been playing, Matt? You've been playing anything cool at the minute? Oh, um, it's it's been a bit of a weird one for me. So, I've been playing a ton of Duel Links because Seven's World just came out and Rush Duel's in that, and I've managed to strong arm <sighs> Sam and our friend Lewis into playing it as well, yeah. which has been a ton of fun. Um, been grinding away on that, and we all three of us recently actually entered a tournament together, which was very very fun. Uh, I have actually somehow I've made thirty dollars in the last two weeks playing Duel Links just from <laughs> winning a tournament and coming second place in a tournament, which I think is more money than I ever made playing the actual trading card game for like ten years. It's pure profit, they right? They don't give out cash prizes. Yeah, so it it's been a really really fun experience playing that. And obviously, again, get, getting your mates involved is also really really cool because then you can like chat about it. You can. Uh, discuss strategy and stuff. It's always really fun to do that with your mates. Yeah. But yeah, that's 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 been quite a lot of my time. And then I've also been checking out a lot of these Steam Next Fest demos. Oh, okay. I still have a ton more to play through. But some of the ones I've gone through so far have been really, really cool. So the one that I've actually been spending a lot of time on recently is one called... Let me just get the name so we don't mess it up. It is called... Not that one. Uh, Heroes of Eternal Quest, which is a really weird game, right? So Heroes of Eternal Quest is it's it's kind of like a reverse tower defense, okay. where you you have like a hero who will just walk around like a map, like like a tower defensey type. Yeah, map. and then enemies spawn along it, and he has to like kill them as he goes through. As he kills stuff, they drop items like consumables and equipment that he can equip. And sometimes they'll drop towers, which you can place along the path. And then the towers will either shoot the enemies, you know, generic tower defense stuff, or they will kind of buff the hero. They'll give you items and equipment, or they'll heal you, or they'll give you like a strength boost or something. And then as you go through and kill enemies, you level up. As you level up, you get a choice of three different options, which is going to be like a permanent stat upgrade or just yeah. immediate heal or something. Kind of your generic, uh, like roguelike kind of setup. And you play through and eventually you get to the end and you kill the boss and then you collect a bunch of rewards take that back to your like home base and then you can upgrade that so like it's like upgrades on top of upgrades on top of upgrades and it's like a really in-depth system i've been really enjoying it we like a good meta loop like where you can meta upgrade to go back into <laughs> meta progression meta progression yeah. yeah i was dancing around it. yeah that's one thing yeah meta, meta progression always love mm. that kind of stuff yeah, it's cool been, though. Uh, been loving it. I just saw a screenshot. This is Loop Hero. <laughs> yes, that is exactly what I thought when I was playing as well. So I haven't actually played Loop Hero. I, I have it. I own Loop Hero. I haven't played it yet. But the one thing that always put me off about Loop Hero was aesthetically, it wasn't very pleasing. Like, I don't wasn't, like Loop Hero's looks, looks either. Yeah, I don't like Loop. No, yeah. I, 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 I don't think it's I, ugly. I'm crazy, Will. Let it go. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think Loop Hero is ugly. I just want to preface that. I just don't think it's visually what I'm looking for. Whereas, like, this, right. like, cutesy, colourful fantasy, I'm like, yeah, this is just visually appealing. This reminds me of things I like. Oh, my God, you know what this looks like? Like, this, the character art in the corner and stuff? Do you Adventure remember? Quest. Adventure yes. Quest. Thank Adventure you. Quest. Yes, it looks like Adventure <laughs> Quest. It looks so much... There's going to be so many people that are like, what the heck is Adventure Quest? It's... I think it's still going now. No, you can still every, play it. Every, everyone who was a kid born in like 80s 90s they'll have had a friend who was who played way too much adventure quest yeah that kid was me oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> i played a lot of adventure quest but did you play adventure quest world is that what it was called no that was 
way after I stopped, I think. That was like a weird MMO one, right? Yeah, it was very odd. I was. I, was I, mean, surprised. I wonder if they're still going, because I think they're all Flash games, which Flash yeah. is now super dead, so... I think you can still like get them to run. You can still play them. It's just a bit funky. Yeah, I used to love um, those games. But yeah, again, I played Eternal Quest for a, a bit, uh, a couple of hours probably, uh, and then I was like, "This is cool. I'm probably going to play more of it later because I haven't actually finished the demo." Uh, the other like big demo I played, I suppose, is Warhammer: Age of Sigmar: Realms of Ruin, mm. which is I went War sorry, in. Warhammer: Age of Sigma. Age of Sigma, Realms of Ruin. Jesus. Why? <laughs> That's so th Warhammer this... TM, Age of Sigma <laughs> TM. <laughs> like, guys, this come on. This game is... So this has been trailered the hell out of. This was at, like, every game show or, like, gaming show, like, reveals and everything that we've, we've had recently. They've barely shown any gameplay from it. So we finally got our hands on it. And I've been looking forward to this because I do quite like Age of Sigma... Like, I don't play Age of Sigmar. I'm more interested in, like, the... I can't remember what it's called, but, like, the, the one where you get, like, a little squad and you fight with, like, the little squads. Like, yeah. kill team for Age of Sigmar. I can't remember what that's called. But anyway, and I was, I was looking at this and I was like, this looks pretty cool. So I went in and played it. And you can only do the story mode. And the story mode is very Warcraft 3. It is very... Oh, okay. Is okay. some okay. named characters. Here is a small group of guys go in and clear the mission with this then you get to another mission it's like okay well now you're learning a little bit how to build some buildings and then you can but you can still only have like eight units in that mission so like even though you can build you can't just like amass a whole army uh and at first i didn't really like it because there's a couple of little things that they did first off they gave you some units that have a ranged attack but then also are primarily melee so I walked them into a fight and I was like, oh, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to shoot, take a step back, shoot again, right? I've played, I've played Warcraft, I've played mm. Starcraft. We're going to kite. You stutter step. Yeah, yeah. But the reload animation is so long and they can't move while they're doing it that you, you physically can't do that. So it was already like a bit weird and it felt a bit jarring, but that got a little bit better when I got some actual ranged units in future because I didn't realize these weren't the, the only ranged unit, right? Mm. Um, the other thing is, it's very, very slow. Like, units take a very long time to get anywhere. I've seen the video, Fights yeah. They're like, they're really trudging slow. along. Yeah. It's. I found myself playing it going, like, this is like really, really pretty, but I'd almost just rather be playing Warcraft 3. But the, yeah. again, the more I played of it, the more it kind of grew on me. The uh, hero abilities were pretty cool. Uh, once we got a lot of them, and a lot of our units got some abilities as well. It felt a lot more engaging. So the way that it works, when, if, if anyone's played any of the Blizzard games, you like highlight a bunch of units, and then you'll do like Control 1, Control 2, Control 3, and that'll control different sections of your army. Yes, and then you yeah. can like, key bind different bits and bobs. That's not how this works. Instead, they kind of want you to grab everything as one big thing, and then you hit Tab to change between which type of unit you're highlighting, and then you can use their ability when you're highlighting them. So it took a little bit of getting used to, because I couldn't... I yeah, was, it sounds I a bit like, finicky, was, yeah. Yeah, I was instinctively trying to bind them all to different keys, and it was not letting me. So I was just like, okay, we're just going to have to play ball with this system. And the other, like, little thing that was a bit weird is... So every time you get a unit, that unit's going to be of between, like, three and five guys. Sometimes it'll just be, like, one hero unit. But instead of each of them having their own HP, the squad of five has a HP between them, and every 20% HP you lose, one of your guys dies. Oh, okay. I've seen that in a few mm -hmm. like strategy games I think I've played in the past, where it's like, yeah, it's like squad health. Mm -hmm. Which like Advance Wars. Like yeah. Advance Wars. Also like um the other Warhammer games, right? Well the like Dawn of War. Dawn of did War, that, yeah. I think. Maybe. I get, uh, it's been a long I, time. I, yeah. <laughs> Again, I don't I don't dislike that it's a thing, but it felt because the fights, like I was saying before, take a while to finish. So because of that, I feel like I've got all this time to do what I would do in Warcraft, which is I would take the low health melee units at the front and I would walk them to the back and then get someone else to tank for a bit and then yeah. walk that unit out. And But you can't do that here because it's the whole squad. Oh, so no matter who in the squad is tanking, as soon as that squad gets down to 80%, one of them is dead no matter who's in the front. Sounds like you're trying to play it like Starcraft or something when it's, yeah. not, <laughs> it's not that yeah. type of game. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> exactly like, it. You're, you're like out here trying to... It's more like a... 
Go on. I was going to say, you're out here trying to like micro your stalkers in this yeah. squad game. It's just mm. not that type of game, I guess. I was going to say, it sounds more like a really like macro-heavy kind of RTS, where it's less about, like you said, like stutter-stepping marines, and it's more just like the, the, the strategy of it. Yeah, but that of was the, the overall fight. But So I haven't tried, obviously, the late game missions, because it's only a demo. There's only the first three missions in there. And we haven't been able to do multiplayer. But so far, the unit cap has been really small. Yeah. So whereas like if i'm playing something like i don't know if i'm playing warcraft 3 or starcraft again two very drastically different unit caps yeah. like starcraft is 200 whereas warcraft is 30 um but my macro game there is that i'm constantly producing units all the time but mm. in this it felt like i'm always at my cap so i'm never able to actually macro anything and because i can't really micro i'm just kind of attack moving over enemies <laughs> yeah and i'm just yeah. like I'm like, there's not, there's not much going on here. Now, again, it's only the first three levels. There could be a lot more depth that gets introduced. I was going to say, this, this sounds like you're doing too well in just like the first missions of the game, right? Uh, I mean... Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it's the speed, though. I, yeah. I think that's yeah. what Matt's getting at. It's like, you're just waiting. You're just watching. You're not playing. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm a passive observer a lot of the time in the game when I want to be actively doing. Ah, uh, yeah. I think see, that's yeah. what's frustrating. Maybe it's a bit like um, uh, the Total War games in that sense, where it's more about watching big, yeah, big place of placement of, smash together. Yeah, yeah and more yeah. about placement. Yeah, yeah. I always Except, felt like yeah, those, those types of games. Kind of units. Yeah, Total War always <laughs> yeah. felt like I never got into those games. I always kind of felt like you zoom out and I'm just watching. Like squares and rectangles, like outmaneuver <laughs> yeah. each other, <laughs> and I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm not big on this. Yeah, that was the, that was the the big demo I played. Other than that, I just played a couple of other little like farming based did, stuff. Yeah, I think. Did you sorry back to did you injure? Was the story interesting at least? For so Age the story was it was decent. Um, it wasn't bad. Again, it was very Warcraft three e right. Where yeah. there's like some cutscenes, some characters walk around, you get some voice dialogue, they try and get you a little bit invested in the world and what's happening around you and why everyone's there. But they don't overstay their welcome, which is quite nice. They they kind of mm. just shut up and let you get on with the game, which is quite nice. They give you just enough to get you intrigued without prattling on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, it sounds cool. Um, I, these these games, unfortunately, I, I don't gel very well with these games anymore. I, just, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like I still, I, my, the, only, the only RTS that could get me playing again is that new, God, what was it called? The not StarCraft game that's coming Stormgate. out. Stormgate. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Storm, <laughs> Stormgate. The game that looks like a janky mobile game, but I'm still huffing hopium for. Oh, we're I mean, fingers crossed. Being you, you both, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but yeah, the other demos, uh, it was just some farming games. Um, and there was nothing like crazy in there. I played a game called Chill Town, which is very Animal Crossing, except there's no animals in it, so it's just like chibi people. But it's like unique selling point is that there's chill vibes and that they you have like a music player and you can choose your like playlist as you just kind of do Animal Crossing things. Oh, okay. Love me some chill vibes. <laughs> Love me some chill vibes, bro. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was very odd because I was sat there like, all right, what's, what's going to be the hook? What's the, what's the unique thing about this game that isn't just Animal Crossing? And then it was like, yeah, ch chill vibes, just chill vibes, man. Oh, I don't know about this. You man. can, you can looks, lay on your looks, bed. This looks really either early or bad. <laughs> so that's yeah, so mean. I, I, but, um, <laughs> out of the games I've played, this was probably like the third best game I've played so far out of all the yeah. demos. So. Mm. Let's just say I haven't been super impressed with this next fest yet. But again, those two, like the Age of Sigmar game, I am optimistic, but it hasn't sold it to me. Yeah. The hero game, I was like, this is really fun, actually considering buying it. And then Chill Town, I'm like, uh, I, I like to think it's going to be better later, but. Yeah. Onto the wish list you go to keep an eye on. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know we still got loads of other games to watch. But yeah, that's basically everything I've done this week. So okay, well, we'll track it along then. Um, uh, I'll do like me and Sam. We have like a crossover thing. Did you want to go a bit about Cyberpunk, Sam? You ready to talk a little bit about? Yeah, we, some... we can. Because <clears throat> we got varying opinions. We have Cyberpunk. very varying opinions. I'll 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 start it off. Um, last episode, 
we were both very early in cyberpunk i think my the bits i talked about were essentially like first impressions um, of what I thought of Cyberpunk. I was getting ready to play Phantom Liberty, the new DLC. Um, and then since then, for like probably, was it been like two weeks, I guess, in between episodes, um, I have been completely engrossed in Cyberpunk to the point where it was like the only thing I played for two weeks. I have completely finished the base game and phantom liberty the big dlc pack in that i've done all the story i've seen and i've done i did as many endings as i could on my one playthrough but i have seen all the other endings uh, and i've done all the side missions as well so all the like beefy content of the game yeah. um i won't go like into the gaming systems like we did that you know kind of like last week again talked about like how, you know you know what cyberpunk is it's a shooting rpg um, but I absolutely loved this. Like, from start to finish. Let me change. I just really haven't changed the page. Um, I absolutely loved this. I think it was during my first impressions a couple of weeks ago. I was like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, it seems really good. Like, I'm really enjoying it. And as soon as I finished Act 1 of... There's three acts in the game. As soon as I finished Act 1, it's like the first eight hours, I was completely in to this game, to this world and these characters. And I I, I, just, I don't know, man. I just absolutely loved it. I couldn't I couldn't take myself away from it. I just wanted to know more about like this world and these characters and the story. I just think it's it's one of the it's it's so hard, right? Because this year has been so good for yeah. games. Like it's not even fair, right? But this is like up there, man. This is like Game of the Year stuff, if you count Phantom Liberty as, like, a game, yeah. it's really up there. It's, it's been insanely good. Um, you're, you how stacked this year is? I, I know, it's, 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 it's so crazy, but I think it's, it's not, like, fair to directly compare it to Starfield, right? I, know, I feel like everyone's been doing that. Like, well, you know, I think, I think that's fine. Yeah. I think it's f I'm, yeah, I'll allow it. <laughs> well, it's kind of like where this game has been quote-unquote fixed <laughs> over like you know a two to three year yeah, period yeah yeah uh compared to starfield's launch i feel like um it's not always directly fair because obviously this game launched in shambles um wait do you, do you think starfield's gonna get fixed i th by mods it by mods it will <laughs> yeah but, yeah <laughs> you, by, by mods yeah but we're not, we never judge a game by the mods <laughs> yeah. by that logic you know skyrim is the best game ever made of all time so i i think thinking back to when cyberpunk came out it was it was such big news right like the base console versions ran horribly to the point where they got cancelled and removed there were bugs everywhere and i think it's kind of crazy to me to think underneath all that there was this like really cool game and story and characters this whole time that just got like completely overshadowed i'm i'm not like defending them like they they got their ass blasted for doing yeah. that shit and rightfully so right because they they tricked a whole bunch of people but That's, i mm. i think i i hope people don't completely discredit this because of that because now you can get this cheaper and you can play this version that you know works and i just thought it was absolutely fantastic from start to finish um it's it's funny yeah. cuz i feel like i've heard both sides where people have i don't know sam you, you didn't like this as much did you but i've heard people like you say like man now it's all fixed what a fantastic game and i've also heard the opposite <laughs> where it's like all the stuff is fixed and all that's left is like it, it, there was never a good game under here to begin with it's like it, it wasn't worth fixing almost I, I really think it depends what you're looking for because when i went into this i wasn't really sure what to expect right i went in with like zero expectations I always, I, I think my brother bought me Cyberpunk for Christmas, um, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'll play this at some point, and I just had, I had like zero expectations, right? And I yeah. figured if I'm ever going to play this, like now is the best time to do it, right? After the 2.0 release with all the DLC, and I just think it really, it did way better 
in areas that I thought it wouldn't. And I think, again, just because my mind was set on... I was still in, like, the cyberpunk is a shitty game in my head yeah. from yeah. the original launch. Where I was like, oh, this game's... It's like, you know, it's the it's CD Projekt Red's, like, worst game they've ever made. But I think, the, in my opinion, from after playing it now, the story, at least, and the characters and everything have always been good. There's always been a good story underneath. It was just hidden and overshadowed by all the, the bugs mm. and the issues it had. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Um, I, I'll talk a little bit more. So, yeah, I finished the base game. Um, and as I said, the game's broken into three acts. And the third act is at the very end. And that's where the point of no return is. Where you basically, you know, the game says, make a save file. We're going to end this game but what you can do instead is that's a really good point to go to the dlc which takes you into a separate area called dogtown it's almost like it's like a little section of the city that's completely walled off and guarded and you can't get in until you start the dlc and it's like its own individual story inside that area it's set up in the game as like a side mission um but it's like it's not you know it's like 12 plus side missions in a row that comprise its own story with its own choices and endings and characters and stuff mm-hmm. um, and the main sort of crux of the story is it's almost like it's basically like an espionage kind of story like a James Bond story is the best way to put it mm-hmm. um, which is really interesting you have all the your main, your main characters like you know Idris Elba's character and all these others and it's Lots of spy missions, lots of espionage, lots of sneaking around and heists and uh, silenced weapons. And the overall story is, I thought it was really fun just from start to finish. I think comparing the writing of Phantom Liberty to the base game, it definitely felt like Phantom Liberty had a few more passes at yeah, like, the writing yeah. and the content. It feels like it's, it's more dense you know it's more cohesive compared to the original game does it um, does it you said it's it's does it like slot neatly into base cyberpunk in a way that like if you didn't know any better would you just ah uh, it's hard to say because some of it does feel a little bit jarring essentially in the main game uh v the main character has an issue right uh, won't mm-hmm. like no spo- like massive spoilers, but that your main character has an issue, um, and the game is spent f- trying to figure out how to solve this issue, and it is a little bit jarring where the DLC is kind of a character contacts you and says, "Hey, we're having an issue. Ha- we're having our own problems over here. We need we need help, um, but maybe mm-hmm. we can solve your problem if you <laughs> help us." Oh, right. And that's that's <laughs> that's kind of how it, you know, right, that's how okay. it feeds in, and that's how it offers um. That's how it offers new endings to the original game, because obviously mm. these characters are these new characters in the DLC are saying we can help you, and then based on you know what you do in the DLC, maybe they can, maybe they can't. Depends on how you play yeah. it. Right? These games are very um, not like choose your own adventure, but they're very they split a lot. You make lots of different decisions that affect lots of different things, which I really like yeah. in this. Yeah. Um, I never played Baldur's Gate, but I know that's a big thing of those as well. It's about how it just branches so insanely yeah. um, I don't think from what I've heard I don't think this is as insane as Baldur's Gate I think Baldur's Gate is the, is the crazy game right that's just like 50 million different decisions no uh, it's not it's not that no <laughs> no not really well, yeah, is it, Baldur's Gate I was going to say Baldur's Gate's more like oh you chose this background with this class and this and now you've got like a unique dialogue option here that you wouldn't have otherwise and then that dialogue option doesn't really yeah. go anywhere and you're like oh that was neat that happens a ton. Yeah, I think so Cyberpunk was, has yeah. something like 13, 14 different endings with... Uh, they're, not, they're, not all like ma- they're not all massively different, but you get like little variations in those as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what are you going to say, Will? Oh, no, I know, I was going to say, it's pro- it sounds similar where there's like lots of minor changes, but there's like maybe three or four big... Yeah. Like, here's what happened in, the, in your game sort of thing, sort of moments. Yeah. The um the one thing in this that still stands out compared again directly comparing to say something like Starfield or a Bethesda game or just like other RPGs, um, just the 
actual spoken parts, like where you're just talking with another character or you're in a conversation with multiple characters. It's, I just feel like the amount of animations, like the facial animation and lip syncing, the blocking of scenes, you know, like mm. where people are standing, where they're sitting. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. all framed really well throughout the entire game. And it yeah. really it really stands out. I'm never I feel like I'm never bored in any conversation because mm. they're always doing like new things in conversation. I'm not like playing Starfield where I talk to someone and then they square up <laughs> in the camera and I'm just talking to a person's face. It's like I'll be talking to uh Johnny Silverhand, Keanu Reeves, and you know, we'll be chatting and he'll just go walk over to a dumpster that's nearby and then just like jump up and start sitting on it and then just start talking. Or, you know, a character will... It's, it's little things like that are sprinkled throughout every yeah, part of the game. They, they just make it feel more like a cutscene, less like a, like yes, a, like yeah. a dialogue-free, <laughs> like going through the motions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's not just during bits where you're locked off, right? Sometimes you will be locked off. You know, it'll be like press F to sit down. And it's like, okay... You're now talking to this person. You can still move your head around and look around, but like you are sat down now. Um, but a lot of conversations as well, you know, and important ones, you still have complete movement. You can't. Yeah, you can just leave. You can just leave. You can just <laughs> pull out a gun sometimes in conversations if you want to. Whether or not that's good, you know, that's a good thing or bad thing. If you, if you want to, yeah, no, no pressure. And it's just, again, it's it's just it's very freeing. I feel like. Um, which is good. I don't feel like I'm locked into like, oh god, here's another fucking conversation for for ages. Um, and I really like that that part of it as well. I think it's really good, and it, it good yeah, it really adds to the freedom of the game. Like there's um certain it's like there's a there's a cut there's a cutscene about halfway through the game. It's like a side mission. It's not a cutscene. You go talk to a guy, and he's done something so you know irredeemable. This guy I'm going to meet is so horrible. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we need to go see this person now and sort out this part of it. And I know that if I go and talk to this guy, the cutscene's going to be like, or not the cutscene, the conversation's going to be like, oh, let me explain myself. Or I can make V just pull out a gun and then start combat and da da da. But what I liked is before I even entered the room, or as I entered the room, you can just do what I did. I just pulled out the gun and you just kill the dude. (laughs) <laughs> and then the, the other captain with is like oh okay yeah that's that's pretty metal but that's that conversation done <laughs> and i like how it, it respects that decision of like yeah. i don't even want to talk to this character that i hate who has done horrible things i just want to end this here yeah, yeah. and the, the game again has tons of stuff like that where you can just make decisions that i wouldn't expect in other games but it respects those decisions I'm supposed to arrest him, Josh. Give him a try. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Just, just assassinate <laughs> this guy is horrible. This, this character is is horrible. He's tied to the cloud storyline, which people yeah, might I know. Yeah, I thought you were talking about him. Yeah, he's just like uh, it's a guy. He's he's in the parking lot, and Judy, who you're with, is like, "Oh, look, he's there. Let's go see him." And I'm just like, I'm just cap the guy and leave. I don't even want to talk to <laughs> this guy. Like, fuck, he's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, that's... so that all sounds great. Yes, Sam. Yes, yeah, Sam. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you have some thoughts. Again, I, I think gameplay wise, Cyberpunk's fantastic. Yeah. I have had I, I've so I've done all the side stuff. Whenever there was a chance to do side stuff, I've gone and done it. Because I love either just walking in and one of the issues I have with Starfield is you never fight enough guys. Whereas in this, I feel like if you just go loud immediately, it's literally 40 versus one. Yeah. Like yeah. you need to hunker down kill the people that can see you and pick your fights in the because if you just walk out into the open you are dead mm. so i i really liked that you you could just do that or you can stealth kill everyone or you have the option to not kill everyone which is kind of how i'm playing it so you can just knock people unconscious mm-hmm. and there's no real difference like there's no repercussions for killing people apart apart from if you're killing someone named, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Like, jo- like Josh said, like, <clears throat> uh, he killed a guy in a car park, and they were like, oh, yeah, well, you know, he was a dick. So, yeah. But... Can, you, can you just kill, like, main characters? No. Is, is there the... No, no, no it no, doesn't... Not, okay, not, okay. not main, main characters. But oh, okay, okay. The, the, the... It's not a lot of people that are immune, 
But if they're important to stories and stuff, I'm pretty sure they're unkillable. It depends. It's so certain certain side quests will have main characters for that side quest. But because yeah. it's but because it is a side quest, typically if you just want to cap the dude because you're a psychopath, you can normally do that and the quest just ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you uh, uh, best not say that, but you can fail the DLC. Yes, yeah. You can, because in the, whole, the, the very first mission, you can fail the whole, the, the whole DLC. <laughs> Imagine buying cool. the DLC and then you can fail it and be like, oh. Yeah. But then you get like a, a special cutscene for doing it. Yeah, you get, well. you get, there's like a, there's a secret um, special cutscene. Oh, one of those. Pay, just it, pay for that one cutscene. It's, yeah, yeah. it, 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 I've seen that cutscene. It's almost like, most, most people, I'd say all people, like no one's going to get this on their first playthrough. You have to really fuck up, I feel. To have yeah, that yeah. first mission fail, but if you do fail it, you get a uh, Keanu Reeves basically being like, "Oh yeah, good riddance. Fuck him. I didn't want to get involved anyway." Yeah, fuck him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, w- once it comes to story, I'm I'm really struggling. You really like, struggling? I, I was all all gas playing Cyberpunk. I before in in our last podcast, I yeah. had 33 hours played. Right now, I have 41 hours played. Yeah, that's not I've like you. <laughs> I've played eight hours in the past two weeks. It's been a struggle. Um, and that's mainly because like, I did Panam's storyline. Yeah. The character. Like, different characters for the main story have their own different paths, and her storyline was cool. Um, but everyone else, I'm struggling to care. Uh, the DLC... Like they they really love like throwing this like intrigue out there. It's like, oh, your friends actually your friends, blah blah blah. But then like you basically just get straight up told that yeah, uh, this person did this, so they've betrayed you, and this person has done this, so yeah, d- all all those things. It's like more like everything else is just turning out to be true. So. <laughs> Like, like th- it, there's no intrigue because everything is happening. It's not paranoia if they literally are out to get you. <laughs> so, so, so what I found is, and I found this with both the main game and the DLC, is as I'm going through, I have like a very optimistic mindset where I want to find the best solution. Right? Ultimately, I want everyone to have a, gr- a great time. I hope everyone can shake hands and, and be friends. Um, well, you, yeah, everyone yeah, makes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, what I found with both the DLC and the main game is that just doesn't exist, I think, in this world. And I think it's, it's deliberate, right? It's like you say, like, characters betray you. Are they betraying you? This, that, or the other. But I think as you get further in, I'm not sure, again, how far you are specifically, you start realizing that everyone is kind of got their own motives and goals and some oh. people the reason so it's it's not bad because again what once you know the setting of this game and in, in night city of course everyone has their own motives yeah right but it's like the game opens so well with you having this like best friend character who's like your brother but not by blood yeah and then it's like right you've had that one experience with this character now you'll never see anything like that ever again everyone else is just a like they can be nice but they're still most people are either borderline psychotic or only looking out for themselves and it's like it makes sense but you've given me such a a big you powerful character to look up to almost and then nothing else i respectfully disagree <laughs> I think, here's the first time we've disagreed on this podcast. yeah I, I i think i think that the one character you can point at if you're looking for that sort of thing throughout the game and this is kind of mild, mild spoilers a little bit for cyberpunk but i feel like just keanu reeves Johnny Silverhand and the character arc you have with him over the game where perspectives shift and change I think is a really good representation of what you're sort of describing I feel personally Um, again it's hard to really break that down without essentially breaking down the entire story of the game Um, 
but I think I will agree. I know you're saying like you did Panam's quest line, and that's really good. Yeah. Um, the other ones I found were weaker because I did all of them as well, oh. like River and Kerry and Judy. Uh, R- Rivers, Rivers was okay. Rivers was all like, right. I, I can at least like it. It made sense. I just. <sighs> I don't know. There's this whole thing where, again, every main story kind of feels the same as well. Where it's like, oh, we need to break into this place stealthily, like, don't get caught. And it's like, it it makes sense why you need to stealthily break into a place, right? Yeah. But it's just constantly like, go to this place, yeah, we need to get in and get intel, plant a virus, blah blah blah, blah blah blah, finish mission, right, wait two days and I'll call you again for the next mission. But that's, so, this, this is specifically side quest stuff, right? This isn't main No, this game. is main story. Because I never felt that fatigue with the main story, personally. I'm not saying you're yeah. wrong, because I, I, I remember yeah. a lot of doing what you're story. describing. <laughs> with um, the main story, you can't just go... Uh, main story mission straight into the next one, into the next one, into the next one. You can, you can, you can skip time in the menu. <laughs> you know that, right? Oh my god! Yeah, you just blown I his guess. Mind. What? No, but it's like if if a character says, "Okay, that was a really cool you... thing we just did." If you want to, you know, I'll call you in a day and we'll carry on. You can press main menu, skip no, no, twenty four hours, and carry it, and carry on immediately. But is that you feel like that's against? like the spirit of the game almost yeah maybe i just put too much Is value there... in that but it's like yeah. it's literally every single main story quest almost ends with oh i'll call you in yeah in video game terms that's like fuck off and do side stuff <laughs> but i also or, or don't do someone else's quest line yeah but, uh, yeah but i don't remember that did happen sometimes but i remember that more of side quest than the main story the main a lot of the main story i remember maybe i'm just misremembering i remember characters would be like you'd finish a mission and they'd be like okay yeah now i'm gonna drive over here do you want to come with me in the car or do you want to meet me there and you can choose and if you choose get in the car so it, it carries on right uh, that, that that specific scenario happens like two or three times i remember having a few i remember happening a few times but... but it's like every pretty much every takamura panam river i think judy as well all of those, you do any of those, it's like, oh yeah, I'll call you again. But every single main story mission in Project Liberty, uh, Phantom Liberty, sorry, every single one you have to wait. I think apart that, from... Yeah, I, I, remember, I do remember that, yeah. There's um, one of the most like egregious parts I remember is I was really into the main story. And I just wanted to like blast it, like you said. I just want to blast it, blast it. And I think I can't remember who said it, but I, th- I think it was Idris Elba, um, whose character is Reed. He said, uh, "We need more intel, so go and do, go get some intel on the streets." I'm like, "Oh, what does that mean?" And the game tells you to straight up do not side quests, but like the mini, mini side quests. They're called gigs. And he yeah. says, "Go do three gigs." Oh, and I was like, "Oh, oh I've never to been me, told those to go side quests." No, so side quests to me are the... Okay, so that's where we're getting mixed up. Side quests to me are the yellow markers. Like, yellow exclamation marks. Because there are... A couple of them are side quests, but, like, for example, Panam's story is, like... A lot of those side stories are literally linked to endings. They are, but they're still side... They're not required for finishing the game. At all. I I mean, they are, because they can give you an ending without doing the main bit. You know what I mean? Uh, it depends. Okay, so I'm I'm talking in terms of Act Three, Point of No Return, where you get sat down and said, "Let's let's finish this game." Um, yeah, right. So I haven't got to that bit yet. Okay, but I have got the call from Panam saying, "Hey, we've got a way to sort you out." Really? Yeah, that's what I mean by they're not. <laughs> They're not. They're completely viable options to do the game. They're not side quests because but some of them are. Like, there's a fucking talking vending machine. Like that is just a straight up side quest. Yeah, because anime about that. Because there are. Because he was an ending. There are yellow exclamation marks, which are like big quests. They're the ones that have 
maybe multiple in a line and they're more involved and there are two types of them there are ones that are like filled in like big yellow circles and they yes. are ones that are required and there are other ones that are kind of just like yellow circles with an exclamation mark and they are they're what they are what i call the side quests um because so for, yeah, for me whenever it just said a yellow uh symbol but just said side biz that to me was a side quest but if it ever had a yellow symbol and it said like oh it's got a name for the quest and talk to so and so or find so and so that to me like i counted as main story no because yeah because there's ones like uh the character claire who runs the afterlife bar she will have you know the the big yellow exclamation mark almost like a you yeah. know, main story side quest but her side her her missions there's yeah. like four in a row and it's like go do races around the map yeah, 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 yeah. that is that to me is a side quest um and then there are we didn't really break it down there are yeah there are things called gigs there's maybe like 30 40 of them in the whole game they are literally like f 10 minute go into this building kill everyone Best and get out about the game is those gigs for me but yeah I think they're like the radiant stuff from Starfield, or it's almost whatever. like it, it, they're they're almost like uh, like challenges. I would it's the closest comparison. It's like mm. the guy will say, um, "Your fixer who gives you the job will say, go in here. We need data from this computer or something, um, and also don't alert anyone." It's just like okay, but the don't alert anyone is optional you'll get paid more if you do that but you can just yeah, go yeah, in and yeah. kill everyone and get the stuff and leave and the fix will be like you absolute moron we said don't get alerted anyway here's 10 grand like yeah. instead, instead of 20 grand or something um there's tons of those but that's like i yeah i call that like that's the optional optional con you haven't got to do any of that to finish the game whereas uh, no but that's why i call it side quests yeah, whereas I guess the other side quests aren't required necessarily to finish the game, but they add a lot of context to the game. Yes. And they can also affect like the certain endings outcomes. and stuff. Certain outcomes yeah. and things, yeah. They do. Because but yeah, it's... I you... just I yeah. didn't want to go in loops, but basically yeah. my, my my big issue was just having to thematically you kept having to wait, so I took that time to go do other people's missions and stuff. But you still just kind of, yeah. I guess you you can just wait. It just doesn't feel right for me as, as a player. Yeah. Um. I guess I care about like that the atmosphere and how it is thematically too much. Yeah. Mm. Um. But I the story just isn't grabbing me. Like I literally, I I think I'm starting to like Idris Elba. Yeah. <laughs> Only you not like him before this. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> um, he's very not. I, he's very not British in this as well. By the way, he has I, like an American I accent. Almost, oh, really? Yeah. I almost couldn't like. Uh, yeah, in the DLC is probably the only character that I remotely care about. Oh, you don't like. But, you don't like Somi. She's interesting. No, she's got, she's got stuff going on. Yeah, she's got a lot of stuff going on, and she's one of the, did her, her her doing things is one of the <laughs> primary reasons why I don't like this DLC. No, she has she gets a lot more. Like, I don't want to spoil it for you, but if it makes you go back and play some more, she gets more stuff, more context, and also I think the mission you're on, which is like the halfway point, you get introduced to the twins at the roulette yeah, board. Yeah, I've already done the yeah. I've, yeah. I've done. Um, they are very cool characters. It's like a. It's a French brother and sister that are twins. Um, with red hair. With red yeah. hair. And they kind of, they get a lot more screen time than I think you initially think they're going to. And they're really, they're really cool characters. No, I just, I think, I did, I think, the, I think maybe my enjoyment was more because, like you said, you kind of hopped out and started doing other things. Whereas when I was in Dogtown doing Phantom Liberty, that's where I stayed until I finished that whole thing. If it just elbow was like, I'll give you a call in a day, I would go straight to the menu. I know it's not <laughs> now I say it, it's obviously not ideal. Um <laughs> but I would just skip time twenty four hours and he would immediately call me and be like, Yeah, come meet me. Yeah. There. I I I think that's more of a my fault thing. It's just I, sh I I just 
I'm there for the story, so if the story tells me to wait and go do other stuff, <laughs> I, I feel like I should wait and go do other stuff. I can't help it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it just it not. Maybe it's also because I played a lot of it before the DLC came out. Maybe. So maybe yeah. if the DLC came out earlier, I would have had a lot more side stuff to do because I, I, I did every single gig well before the DLC came out. Yeah. So the first thing I did was I did all the gigs, then once there was no more gigs, I did main story, and then more gigs turned up, so I did all the gigs again. Because to me, that, that was the really fun bit. But... Well, my... But yeah. yeah, my playtime from you, start you to... Just... Fi- Sorry, you go. Well, I was just going to... Is it, is it just a case where, like... Jo- I know, Josh, you, you started wanting to play this again because of the anime. Is, I was, yes, is, yeah. Is, 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 is Sam, are you just not digging the sort of world and theme of the world as much as josh is and that's no i I think everything about it is cool i just i just don't get along with the story oh fair enough and that's that's what's taken me out yeah i I think i think it does help the fact that uh laura and i yeah we watched edge runners on netflix and that was uh, that was right before the launch of 2.0 i think or maybe 2.0 had just come out and i was so ready to just have more of that, I think. You know, you just mm. like you're like, okay, I'm actually, I'm really feeling this right now. Um, because the world is fantastic. Just the city looks amazing. It's not very vertical city, despite it being like really tall buildings. It's, it's quite flat, um, mm. to move around, but it just looks amazing. Like just Although, all, all the buildings. Never and... get Rebecca in there. No, <laughs> no, unfortunately not. There's uh there's tons of references and stuff to Edge Runners as well that they added yeah. in like DLC over time and stuff. So yeah, my final fit was wearing the outfit from the anime and stuff, which is kind of <laughs> kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, I just I just felt like I re- I really connected with this game during my time. I finished on uh, sixty f- sixty five hours, I think roughly. Jesus. Um, and that's yeah. That's- I assume you were max level. I was I mean, really, max level. Yeah, so. I, I was. I think I ended on fifty nine, <laughs> which is one oh, level right. short of max. But I didn't do every gig. Um, ironically, yeah, that I, being that being your favorite bit, that was not my least favorite. But I didn't, I, yeah. I didn't see them as necessary towards the end because they were very similar. I found. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of, I'm sad that it's over. You know, it's just like an RPG finishes, and it's like, oh, I don't, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if I'm, I'm not sure if I'm finished. But at the same time, I don't want to go back and play more of the same content I've seen, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I just wished there was a little that's, bit more. Yeah, I mean, that's like, ever since Baldur's Gate 3, me and Aaron finished, we basically haven't spoken <laughs> yeah. to each other since. We just wander around the house, <laughs> yeah. looking lost. Yeah. Aimlessly. <laughs> like, oh. Wait, we've got, like, uh, days until Baldur's Gate 4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> any, any day now, right? <laughs> sure, um, I hope so. Got Jeff Keighley's Game Awards coming up. He might surprise you with something. Sure, he'll announce something. That'd yeah. be amazing, yeah. though. If Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year, and then they're like, and they announced the DLC at the same time. I guarantee you'll get. Um, oh, now you've said that. <laughs> if, 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 <laughs> I'd be disappointed if that doesn't. Happen. If it fills the void a little bit, I guarantee there'll be uh, Elden Ring DLC news at the Game it's Awards. Got to be right? guarantee. Yeah, guarantee. Be. He announced. He announced you, Elden Ring, right? Because you guaranteed uh, Call of Duty on Game Pass this year. Oh well, yeah, I, I read can't. A new story yesterday. That said <laughs> yeah. It's definitely not happening. Look, the Magic Eight Ball yeah, is not always off. correct. <laughs> if it wasn't for that. Uh, agreement that they had to have though it would have wasn't been, for the, be honest. the pesky British competition commission or <laughs> yeah, they, they just yeah. hate those Brits <laughs> yeah it's all, it's all awful <laughs> we were this close to you getting Crash Bandicoot 4 on Game Pass this year I'm so sorry everybody <laughs> wait, wait wait I'm pretty sure we still can get Crash Bandicoot 4 on Game Pass uh, eventually not this year I thought oh. the agreement was just Call of Duty could come over and they said that they weren't going to put Diablo on this year well, we'll wait and see. I'll ask the eight ball later and see what kind of outcome it's I get for you. Get Crash Bandicoot <laughs> Four. I'm going to be very upset with you. Yo, Crash Bandicoot Four is really good though. Anyway, um, yeah, I got yeah nothing else to say about Cyberpunk. I really enjoyed it. Really loved my time with it. I teared up at both the ending to Phantom Liberty and the main game. So there you go. That's twice. Wow. Twice. Uh, the ending of Phantom Liberty was better than the end to the main game. I feel had a very strong ending. Phantom Liberty, mm. and I'll I'll say that I um of all the endings, you know, like you make the save before the point of no return in 
you know the main game and the DLC, and you do everything you can. And even then, I couldn't do everything. It's like you've fucked up with this character about twenty hours yeah, ago, yeah. so I'm afraid you cannot witness this ending. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, no. <laughs> that's fine, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's you know that's what I've been doing. Did you have anything else you played, Sam? Uh, right. The the game that is kept most of my attention and kept me sane during uh down periods at work is Timberborn. Timberborn. Oh, yeah, nice. Fucking love this game. Oh my god. Um. Oh, I saw you yeah, playing this. So yeah. It's just it is an early access game, but it's you could release this and it'd be a fair release. Like, there's more than enough content, all all the systems are in place, like, it's not missing. Like, you know when you play an early access game, and you're like, feels like there's something just yeah. not here? This yeah. hasn't got that. Like, you could release this and convince me it's a fully fledged game, right? I know they want to add more, and like, I think update 5 is currently on the experimental like realm, like you know, you can open betas and yeah, be like, oh, be on the the newest build and stuff. Oh, it's launched a um, while ago, twenty twenty one. Just saw yeah, the release. Aaron's been playing this for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, this this game's great. So you you have beavers and you get to choose between two types of beavers to run <laughs> to run your colony. You get the like na- not nature loving, but like. I guess com- compared compared to the other one, yeah, basically just regular beavers, and then you get the iron tooth beavers, which are like Dwarves. they're they're really smart. They they love technology. Um, the the way that they you get more iron tooth beavers is you have to build, uh, like breeding pods, and then you just basically grow a beaver inside this tank. <laughs> Mm. Whereas the normal course, beavers are kind it works of, you know, in nature. Just standard mammal <laughs> breeding, you know what I mean? So this is like a <laughs> is this, so this is like a city building game. Well, it, this is it's a straight up city builder. Okay. Where the the catch is there is a couple of water sources located around the map. Water sources. And then the, the, the water flows because of <laughs> physics. <laughs> And then it'll go eventually, like, if it gets blocked, then the water rises, and then eventually it's going to hit an edge of the map, so then it goes off, right? Right, okay. So basically, once once it's finally going off, you can see where the water, you know, what it's irrigating, how deep it is, where it goes, etc, etc. And then a drought will come, and the drought turns the water sources off. Yeah. And slowly evaporates all of the water on the map at quite a slow rate, but the the droughts get longer and longer as the game goes on. So to start off with, like you build like a little mini dam, where it's like, okay, the water runs along my land and then like kind of goes off here and then it goes and goes and then goes off the map. So you build your dam so when the drought when the drought happens. Like you've made a blocker to hold in your water so that it still irrigates oh, okay. your, your farms and stuff, and then it's like, well, that'll that'll suit you at the start, but eventually the drought's going to last so long that that water's going to dry up. So you need to build either a bigger dam or a r- reservoir or something because. It's got the standard, like, your beavers need food, so you've got to have farms, right? And yeah. your beavers need water, so you've got to pump out the water. So the more beavers you've got, the more water you need, so you need to pump more water, which means you run through your water faster, and obviously the droughts get longer. And once a drought ends, the water sources start up again, so they start, you know, flooding the rivers and everything as per usual, and that's your time to, like, build up get a backlog of water stuff like that there was another game you um, played like this sort of thing a while ago i think it was pixel art and not 3d where it's kind of i think it was just like a city builder but yeah you like you you don't tell people what to do you you kind of influence them you know to... I, I mean you still you still very much tell people what to do in this yeah um because 
the 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 one thing I really liked about this game was you, you have to play around with the water to irrigate f uh the dirt, and the, if there's water nearby, the dirt goes green, and that means you can grow stuff on it. Right. But normally, what would happen is you would have a farm. And, like, in most city builders, your farm space versus your, like, housing industrial space is normally, like, 20 to 30% farmland to, like, 80% buildings. Just mm. f And those buildings could serve any purpose. Industrial, storage, housing, etc. Whereas in this game, it's, like, right, your first, like, 25 by 25 area, that's just gonna be trees. Because, yeah. boy, do you need wood. <laughs> <laughs> Every, like, you do get metal eventually, but it's not like, oh, metal is just better wood. It's like, no, metal has its own purpose. Everything is made out of wood. You are beavers. Yeah. Everything is made out of wood. <laughs> It feels like, like you're scolding your beaver child. <laughs> you are a beaver! <laughs> Every town I've ever made is like 80% trees and farmland and like 20% industry and housing which is mm. really cool because normally normally the space is more like how do i efficiently put all my people tightly together so you don't have to walk very far whereas this is like how do i mold the world well enough so that water flows and retain that water so that i can control the amount of farmland that i need mm. um and you get dynamite so you can blast your own Caverns and lakes open. Beavers with dynamite. It's, Jesus Christ! It's really fun. Yeah. No, it's, this game's really fun. I've pumped thirty hours into this game. This is another. This ago. is another one of those games where I'm so happy for you that you love these games and you enjoy <laughs> them. But these, it's I can. It's these are so not me at all. I've tried these games I, before. I, I think we can get Mr. Satisfactory. Yeah, S yeah. Satisfactory gets me because it it, it awakens my like programmer side. You well, this this is similar. Yeah, uh, yeah. X beavers in, Y wood out. I go. also fucking hate beavers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, well, I'm afraid I've got to kick you off this podcast. Uh... <laughs> no, I don't, um, I don't know. Mm. I've tr I've tried like city builders before. Yeah, and it just doesn't there do is... a lot for me there is a difference between city builders and factory games yes yeah and th there is generally quite a good bit of crossover <laughs> between those two games yeah mm. but they are different yeah um, so i do get you I, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to trying um city skylines 2 because that launches soon i think it's a uh, couple of weeks and that's on game pass mm. So, all right, I'm out again. How can you be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna try City Skylines too? But you no, look no, at no, this. It's, no, it's, it's it's literally because it's like because it's on Game Pass and I have Game Pass. It's like here it is, right? Like right, okay. It's, it's just <laughs> like maybe I'm at a time in my life when City Builders, I'm back in. You got you got to try these things every once in a yeah. while, right? Mm. You got to try it. It's like Brussels yeah. sprouts. You got to try them to know oh, that you don't fuck, like them. I was just about to say <laughs> Brussels sprouts. That's so weird. <laughs> it's because you're the same person. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think my, my favorite part about this game is Sam was playing this and streaming it to the Discord call that we were in. And every now and then someone would show up and they'd be like, oh, you're playing Beaver Game, show me the dam. And then Sam would like pan over to this like really boring looking dam and everyone would always just be really disappointed there wasn't like a bundle of twigs and logs. Oh, it's an actual <laughs> dam. <laughs> Look at this as well and like there's some really like crazy buildings in this. And mine... Maybe it's because I was too efficient. I never got to that stage. I would get like 30, 40 beavers. Oh, you've done it again. And then, <laughs> too and efficient. then I would get to the stage where I was building automated beaver bots to replace my real life beavers <laughs> so they could live a life of luxury. Um, and then I just had the beaver bots do everything. I do love, by the way, that we're using things like beavers living a life of luxury and the beaver robots. Yeah, the beaver bots. The beaver bots. Yeah. Beaver bots. It's a mechanic yeah. in the game where. <laughs> Based on what buildings you build, how nice the land looks, do you have, how many variations of different like foods you have, etc., makes your beavers happier. And then at certain thresholds, <laughs> they work faster, run faster, and live longer if they're happier. Yeah, it's always good to have so, a happy beaver. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So I just, the point where I was like, well, I'm I'm self sufficient. Now I just want to make the beavers as happy as possible, and then you replace them with beaver bots, <laughs> and then they have zero hour work days, and they love life. I can't. I, love, I can't I love, anymore. I always I can't. love. <laughs> I always love the end game of all these city builders. Is you end up with some kind of they they split at some point, right? And at one point you end up in some like dictatorship where everybody is assigned their job at birth and they never <laughs> no one has aspirations or you, you never get you know you're the wood carrying beaver that's all you do forever um until the day you die and then the other way these these city builders split is like i've created a complete utopia where yeah. nobody works the resources are plentiful there's no war or conflict and there's never an in-between. I yeah. love it. This beaver game looks cool. Oops, I've invented late-stage capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I, I think I'm probably done until the new update comes out, like, fully. Because it's an experimental build. I don't want to play it because there is bugs and stuff. What, are they adding, like, guns? Or... <laughs> no, but that, so the big thing they're adding is bad water sources. Oh, okay. So it's going to be like corrupted and dirty water, and you yeah. have to like manage that water and contain it, um, as well as obviously getting your own water sorted. You just gotta just be careful. Make sure they never add the unions DLC. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still think guns would be way more exciting. <laughs> um, but you know you do you yeah, dirty water beavers don't believe in weapons <laughs> yeah. and then but downloaded it... a couple of demos okay what um so the main one the one i played quite a lot today is called the crust the crust uh, need to work Sorry, on the name. that's a really funny it's, name yeah it's it's just another city builder you're on oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the moon you're on the moon um, and basically, it's got the uh, what's the game that did it? Uh, it's got the Frostpunk thing where you have to build people that go out and explore like a world map to get stuff. Oh, while yeah. Well, you've also got your main camp at home. But oh, okay. what you do at home, your macro is you can only have things above ground, and then you build a big space elevator. And then you have to mine out inside, and you have below ground where all your industry is. Oh, I love a good space elevator. So you're you're mm. managing like upstairs and downstairs essentially. Um, downstairs being the I... center of the moon, or <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's. I mean, it's kind of just a generic city build, city builder, especially for, as much as I could play the demo. It's you got to make power. The only power sources I had available were solar panels, which means you have to have batteries, you know, standard stuff, and then you get all your resources. You have to process all the resources. You have to store all the resources. Like you know, you know the drill. I need to go um, through next fest, man. Everyone's playing all these like cool demos. I haven't even looked yet. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. I need to have so, a good cruise. I think this is a good one. I I played a couple of duds. Yeah. Um Name and shame. I won't bring them up, but just. Do you remember any that you played that were? Oh God, that were poopy. I it's fine if you can't don't. Can't remember no, the cool. name. I uninstalled it immediately. I played a, a deck <laughs> builder tower defense game. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, hit me with those words." Yeah, I'm in. And then it it was just like really poopy. Oh no, the, the big one, the big disappointing one, the big poopy. Pioneer, Pioneers of Pagonia. Pioneers because of Pagonia. This one, I I've seen people make videos about this. Like, it's this has been on my feed on like YouTube and Twitter, yeah, and stuff. And I played it, and it's it's another city builder. It's um, another another one. But you start with like five hundred people and enough resources to basically build everything. From yeah, the to, get to just win the game. Yeah. So that that's more yeah, like a, that's more like a sandbox than a strategy. Yeah, game you're then. instantly stable. Yeah. There's no. It feels like there's no growth, whereas that's why those games normally start you with eight or twelve people, is because right you need to do everything, but really lightly and manage and then grow yeah. and develop and stabilize. Yeah, it's the friends you make along the way. It's the journey. Um, is that were they was is that like a demo thing, and they were just trying to like look look at all the cool maybe, stuff? Maybe yeah. Look at yeah. I, I mean, I've no idea. Apparently, it's co-op. I don't know how. 
like city builders I, I don't know how you can really do co-op city builders but hey ho we'll see you just build a city next to someone else building their own city you just watch Maybe. each other it's like having two presidents that, yeah. or two mayors of a city oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, like sim city's well, thing wasn't it i remember that yes i i remember playing that game and then being like, I'm going to provide all the firefighters for everyone. And everyone's <laughs> yeah, just like, yeah. well, we just have our own firefighters. And I was like, ah, I see. <laughs> I thought SimCity's thing was always online DRM and oops, everyone hates us now and the game's dead. Well, <laughs> well it was that too. but <laughs> Good yeah. times. Um, one for you to look out for, Josh, is called Foundry. Me and Welch, she played that. Oh, okay. It's uh, satisfactory. Um, oh, you know, I... Not to like cut you off from Foundry, but I literally today looked at Satisfactory again because I was like, "You must be close to coming out now, right?" It's been so long, surely, and they're still like on update zero point seven or something. That game's still years yeah. away. It's so sad. I just want to play the finished game now. Mm. Yeah, so I love that game. That one was nice. Um, yeah, cool. I, I, I mean, I, I'm I'm only really looking at like deck building games. And touching on tower defense, but yeah, they're... well, you know what you tower like. Tower defense is such a hard genre to do right. And when I say do right, I mean captivate me for more than an hour. Yeah, because mm. the games kind of just get boring really quickly, and then city builders. So, okay. but yeah, cool. Next fest, it's a good time. Yeah, I'll have a look at some point and find some stuff. Um, okay, we'll chuck it to Will then. What have you been doing, Will? Um, I played. The tutorial for Lamplighters League, um, which is the XCOM Indiana Jones kind of game, and I immediately dropped it because <laughs> um, the uh, the the setups kind of interesting. It is very like Indiana Jones. You're you're like a you're hired by a guy to um, retrieve a package. The package turns out to be like a deck of cards, and then some stormtrooper nazi looking dudes accost you and they steal it and you have to chase them and i was like oh, i'm kind of digging this and it's got a kind of um real time uh game around the xcom game to where you're in a level and you're moving through the level in real time with your little party and it's got a bit of like uh like what's like stealth games like commandos you know where you have a guy who's really good at sneaking and he's good at stealth and he can go up behind people and KO them, but he can only do it a certain amount of times per mission. So you have to like pick and choose like, do well, do we want to, uh, do I want to use this guy, KO everyone in the room and then move on? Do I want to move in, initiate combat, which turns into like, which turns it into proper XCOM with all my characters? Or do we want to like take out one key guy and then sneak our way through because there's like a stealth element to it um and the setup's kind of cool and the i was enjoying myself and the reason i dropped it was because <laughs> at the end of the tutorial it it goes uh it does the classic like oh there's a really tough guy there you've got to get to the end. and every time a game does that i'm like oh, i'm gonna i'm not gonna what do you think i am some kind of amateur i'm gonna <laughs> beat this guy up so i got my squad wiped immediately and then when I hit load, instead of loading some kind of autosave, it just dropped me back on the main <laughs> menu and was like, yeah, get fucked. <laughs> because apparently it just has oh, no autosave. Oh, God. <laughs> Which I guess is partly on me, but I don't know. I, I feel like expecting some kind of autosave in the year of 2023 is, I don't think that's my fault. <laughs> this is one of the, like, I feel like one of the worst genres that could happen in as well right yeah at the end of the day it's yeah. still a strategy game if you go for what you did you still gotta do the strategy or whatever whereas yeah. if it was like i don't know a first person shooter or an adventure game or something you could just straight line it right and get back in a quarter well, of the time exactly and that's and that's it if it was like a sandbox yes like, yeah x has it's like it has a um story tutorial right but when you start you can just go, nah, just dump me in the overworld and skip that. We'll, I'll just start right away. And if I lost like half an hour's progress of that, I'd be like, oh, whatever. It's all, I'll just do something different this time, right? Yeah. But now I have to go back through this on rails tutorial <laughs> again for about 40 minutes to an hour or something. And I'm like, I don't know, man. It's, yeah. 20, it's 2023. You got time for that. I, got, I can't waste another hour's time. I've got so much other stuff to play. That's so, like, I feel like 
that's something that will get picked up really early in playtesting, surely, right? Like, that yeah, would happen, and yeah. they'd be like, the, whatever person's playtesting would be like, oh, that's a bit of shit. <laughs> and they'd be like, yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah, fix that yeah. immediately. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird. That's, that's, it, like you say, just not having that in this day and age in a game. In a game that's clearly had a lot of effort put into it. it look, like, it looks great. Like, yeah. But there's just no autosave. It's like it's a JRPG from 25 break, years right? ago. <laughs> it's, it's made by guys that did a bunch of the Shadowrun games. Yeah. So you would have thought they would have... It's, it's, know, it is that literally... Was, it's to the yeah. point where I'm like, is, was that a bug? That it just didn't bother saving at any point during... Or is it, by, is it by design? Because it's like, have you, what, have you not played Shadowrun before? That's how they've always done it. You have to make sure you save. <laughs> well, uh, maybe, maybe, but... I'm not defending it. I'm, um, just, I'm just trying to think of why yeah, the fuck no, that would you. be in this game. Yeah, <laughs> I think, yeah. I think Shadowrun did do that. I think you, yeah. you could only manual save. But then Shadowrun came out during that era of time, right? Where autosave still wasn't a guaranteed yes, thing. Yeah, yeah. There's a really sc- there's a it's it's not so much these days, but there was a really scary period with games where you'd be playing an RPG in say mid 2010s, maybe like early 2010s, and you wipe in this RPG, and you're like, okay, back to the menu. How much have I just lost? Am yeah, I back to yeah, the main? Yeah. I feel like these days, normally it's given, right? If I die in FF16 or something, I know I'm not going to get... I'm not going to lose a bunch of progress because that's just like, yeah. you know, it's it's good game design, I feel like, to have auto-saving. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't feel... Yeah, I don't yeah, feel... I don't yeah. feel like... Yeah, I don't feel like not having auto-save is a design feature. Um, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, put, I'll make the hard point of just saying that that is bad design. <laughs> So, a quick comparison, Persona 5, if you died, you can restart from the fight yes, normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, at worst, you would restart from, like, the the last, like, before the fight, or at the end of your last fight. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's something. Persona 4, yeah, Persona if 4 you fucked me. lost... <laughs> <laughs> you go back to the last time you saved, and if you yeah. lose two to three hours, you cry inside and yeah. try not to drop the game. Before Golden came out as us, the original PlayStation 2 version, um, you could only save at the beginning of a dungeon. Yeah. So if you got to floor 14 of a dungeon, you could crawl <laughs> for it for three hours, and then you die because the enemy goes first and gets like three crits and weakens everyone to get bonus attacks. I'm yeah, not. I, just, go, yeah. just go back to the start, mate. That I, only happened to me once. But <laughs> Jesus, it hurts. I'm not. I'm not only shocked that it's in this game that you're playing now, Will. I'm like in 2023, but I'm also shocked that it wasn't one of the first things that got fixed as soon as consoles had hard drives and everyone had yeah. access to saving. Well, because that's, at, that's what point, whole... at what point? Do you, when you look at a dungeon and think, if this person dies, they've lost 40 minutes of their time. Isn't that fun? Like, yeah. <laughs> like no. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, yeah, like uh, every game should have like a like Sam said, like you, it just needs to go back far enough where like here's where the things started to go wrong, and we're gonna put you right back before that. You know, <laughs> you know, what I mean, yeah. I feel like before you had the opportunity to completely fuck up, we've just made a little save point for you, so yeah. don't worry about it. And I, yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly think I'm now. I'm wondering if it's a bug. Like even talking about it, I'm like. That was ridiculous because I haven't been dumped to menu. Yeah, in it's, it's a game crazy. In about fifteen years or something. The last time so, this happened to me was in Dishonored, Dishonored One, and yeah. that was that was a bug. My save got like corrupted, and I lost four hours. And I yeah. never. I, and because of that, I have never played the Dishonored series. I've, I've yeah. got a story like that. XCOM Two. Yeah. I got to the final mission, and my save corrupted. Oh, and I've never, I've never finished XCOM two because yeah. I, yeah. I couldn't bring myself to play through the entire game again. Yeah. and I love that game. Yeah, yeah. I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. Played Dishonored one, had an amazing time for four hours. This is fun. Got corrupted. I'm not doing four hours again. Haven't played yeah. the entire series like since, even though I enjoyed my four hours <laughs> with that yeah. game. We were, in, we were at uni, and what was it? Pokemon X and Y came out. Yeah. And I think I just, I forgot to save after about like four hours of gameplay and then just was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to play it again. Pokemon's an easy yeah. enough game. I can just walk through it and do it in half the time as well. I've, I've actually gotten into the habit these days of if I'm playing a PC game, 
regardless of what I'm playing, if I'm done, I just alt F4 out of the game. Mm. Like, I just assume that my game is somewhat <laughs> saved in some capacity. <laughs> that's, such a, that's such like a free and fast way to live. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. I'm, I'm, don't I'm, you just pull the power cable out of your PC? Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking for it, basically. Like This should, this should, this, this yeah. should happen to me, not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're getting to the point now where you know what a game is like, oh, th when this symbol appears, it's quick saving, don't turn off. And yeah. every time you see that, you like mash X, you're like, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, we know that. Yeah. Of course is... you're all and now yeah. if it doesn't turn up, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's, that's another weird part is I swear there were like moments where the game was hitching because and like a symbol was popping up. And because I'm so like, I don't know, I've played so many PC games at this point or whatever. I was like, oh, it's saving. That, that, you know, yes. That's what it's yeah. doing. Like, what else would it be doing at this point? Um, Oh no, broken! This is how you find out you got a broken hard drive or something. <laughs> it's a fucking lab light, Leslie. I I I want to try. I I do want to go back to it, but like that annoyed me so much. Yeah, that no, I get that. Yeah, I was like, why I need to go play somewhere else and cool off. So what I finished was I finished Lies of P. Um, Hell yeah! I, I didn't hundred percent it. There's multiple endings. I'm not going to do those because I got I got like the middling ending Are you and then. The fire? Yeah, I lit the fire, and appa apparently there is a way to like load your save, but I missed it, and I started New Game Plus already, and I was like, well, I'm not going to do all of New Game Plus. Watch on just YouTube, fuck new, it. Just a slightly yeah. different ending. So I went and YouTubed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you beat the King of Puppets? I, yes, I did. Okay, so that was so the story of that was Thank I, God. I streamed for about like four hours one day, just doing that boss over and over again, and then obviously I put it down. I went to go hang out with my girlfriend for the evening, and then I was like, "No, I'm annoyed. I'm going to go beat him." And then I first timed it off. Oh yeah. no! <laughs> it's the thing that like, you were getting him down. Like yeah. you were getting him down. And I was like, "He's going to do it." But, is that like, is that the final too boss? Much time was passing. No, that's not no, even. No, that's yeah. about the halfway mark. Oh, Me okay. and Sam were watching that, and I said, "Oh, this is a really cool final boss." And Sam was like, "I don't think this is the final boss." And I was like, "This guy has such good final boss energy. Like it's a giant yeah. guy who phase two turns into a little dude with a scythe. Yeah, and he's mostly." And it, yeah, he's literally called the King of Puppets. Me knowing yeah, nothing yeah, about yeah, this game, like, this I'm is... like, that's the final boss, surely. <laughs> so I will say, um, I think the first half is stronger than the second half in this game. I think it has, um, like you said, like that guy had really good final boss energy, right? For, a, yeah. for a lack of a better way to <laughs> yeah. put it. And it feels like everything after that, you, it was kind of like the game was kind of running out of steam. Like it had its big King of Puppets moment yeah um and then everything after that was like it's it's a great game i would rec highly recommend it especially if you're after souls on pc um i have started this now still really good weaker second half than the first half yeah. um for the there was a couple things i wanted to mention was that that king of puppets fight starts this trend of there's a bit in this he he has this like big plonky first phase and then he'll transition he transitions into his like second boss type oh uh uh when you when you beat the first when the first health yeah. bar when you beat mm. the first health bar <coughs> and that just suddenly every boss post that guy all of them do that which is i feel like that's a fun mechanic when it's used sparingly yeah. when it's every boss it becomes a slog because because after a while you just have the first boss down and then it just becomes like tedium to because you want to be learning you need to learn the second boss's moves all over a sudden but every time the the second phase pulls out some bullshit and just insta kills you it's like right i have to learn that move to to counter yeah. it efficiently but now i have to go and beat the first part, part of this boss again to, in order to just to get and then it'll that'll happen multiple times uh, it's exactly the same as um final boss and Sekiro, right like if every single boss was a four phase boss fight where you're struggling on phase four and you've got to do the other three phases every single yeah, time you would yeah. hate it but because they used it in one place at the very end of the game it ended yeah. up being super memorable and really really cool yeah but it, by it the sounds this, they're overusing it a shit ton. way overused it to the point where like there was a boss that had that was just one it was a there's a weird gimmick no it's not a gimmick boss it's kind of a gimmick boss near the end of this game where it was like one health bar and he died and i was just like all right okay what have you got for me and then the, the <laughs> boss fight music ended and the door opened and i was like oh he's weird. just dead oh, <laughs> he's dead all right weird fair enough 
Um, well, it's almost like it's almost like they're forgetting why you do that in the first place. It's supposed to be a surprise. It's supposed to be an oh shit moment. It is, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. But like yeah. you say, like if you just keep doing it over and over again, you might as well have just one health bar that when it gets to half way down still change form or whatever but just like it's not a surprise right because you're doing it on every fucking boss just have one health bar or, yeah or i i just i just feel like for some like big story bosses it's fine but after after a while especially that king of puppets boss i feel like just um just let me skip the first phase. If I've beaten it like ten times in a row without getting hit, there should yeah. be some kind of like, all right, okay, you've, <laughs> all right, you've got this. You <laughs> yeah. clearly don't need to do this again because it's just annoying. So, um, but that breaks my immersion. Breaks your immersion, yeah. In my so there's game. a bit of that. There was a bit of um, they you you feel very. It's a bit like Sekiro in this where you can you feel like you're very. This isn't a. I feel like Dark Souls is like making you feel tiny so that when you beat these big bosses, there's like a real, you know, fuck yeah, I yeah. did it sort of moments. Whereas Sekiro is more like a power fantasy where you, you are also a super cool ninja and you, when you beat a guy, it's like, well, of course I beat the guy. I'm the super cool ninja. <laughs> like it's, like, <laughs> it's almost like a power fantasy kind of thing. Yeah. And this is like a little bit of that. Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> and then, um, but I felt like this did the same, this had the same problem that some of the late game bosses in Elden Ring had, where it, it feels like the boss is doing its super cool 20 hit combo, and it's not a fight, it's just, I'm just, sitting, I'm just sitting here getting wailed on for, you know, five, <laughs> yeah. 10, 15 seconds at a time before I get to do anything other than just get wailed on. And I just feel like maybe it's because I always gravitate towards like big, heavy. I was melee about to ask games. you that. Yeah. But, but then, but then I think, but if that is just like not, if, if they like game style me out of that way of playing like why have it in the first place every you know? single and this isn't just like lies of p it's it's the souls games as well i feel like as someone that plays these games once you know if i finish them and then put them down um so i'm not like a pro or anything i always gravitate towards great swords or massive yeah. weapons because i think they're, yeah. so, they're they're amazing right like you go against mobs in corridors and you kill them in one or two hits with massive sweeps it's fucking awesome but then the issue i have with all of these games i really had this problem with elden ring is i i feel like i never get a turn in combat yeah. because i'm literally too slow and, yeah. I, and I feel the, like I, elden ring and, um and games the way you can't always you can't you either can't always easily respec or i don't know how to respec i feel like oh I've built into this weapon that I feel like I literally cannot use, and now yeah. I feel and, now and then, I feel stuck. Yeah, and then there's a certain amount of like, well, you know, you do have to sort of adapt your playstyle to these bosses sometimes. But I always think like, yeah, but like, why, why, why do you let me play ninety percent of the game? <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> the way I want to play, and then for the last like ten, fifteen percent, it's like, uh, no, you, sorry, you picked the wrong sword thirty hours ago, and yeah. uh, you're just not gonna have fun in this fight. Um, I've done two bosses so, in Lights of P, and I feel like I'm already being pushed out of Greatsword. Yeah, oh, yeah. Does that mean you've done the tutorial or I've, the, I, the demo that was recorded? I, ha I have done the clown boss where he pulls his own head off. And yeah, the ringleader. Yeah, yeah. And I have done the Constable. weird police officer crawly dude yeah. with electric. That, that, pretty much straight after that is where the demo ends. So yeah, that that boss in particular, I feel. The same really annoyed annoyed me. I did uh, like a f quite a few runs of that boss. I did maybe like you know five, six, seven attempts, and I was getting closer, but I just couldn't quite nail it. Um, and the game had that like fountain where it's like, oh, use this to bring an NPC in. And I was yep. like, oh yeah, okay, I'll see what that's like. And it made the fight absolutely trivial. So I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. there's like there's just no middle ground. I needed like a little bit extra help maybe, and it just like yeah. won the fight for me. <laughs> I, was I like, can oh. say during the demo. Uh, the NPC was practically useless. The, so no, the, it the, like they buffed it. The yeah, that was all the feedback then. It, yeah, it yeah. wasn't buffed in the sense of it, do, it did tons of damage. It just held aggro. Yeah, in, yeah. in the demo, it died very, very quickly. Oh, okay, yeah. This, this enemy just held aggro, and I just I killed the boss, I think, without even using a, 
uh, puppet Estus, whatever, you, whatever they're called. Yeah, so I was like, I was like, oh. I'll sell. Yeah, Estus. Okay, yeah, we'll just call it Estus. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that's big. Uh, okay, so one one thing that really annoyed me is, uh, you know, the red moves when it winds up a big yes, attack, yeah. and you have to perfect block it, or you take a shitload of damage. Um, they start leaning so hard on that mechanic oh, by the end they? of the game, and there's a bunch of moves where I they are not reactable i swear to god because what normally happens right, old man a guy, a, guy, <laughs> a guy will like raises up the first the constable boss right he's a good example where he has like a a combo where he'll like try and hit you twice and then he winds up this big slam and you can like okay here it comes and then it comes out and then you perfect block and it's like great there are moves late game in this and like they give them to regular enemies too where they just the only way to know you it's completely you don't he just stands there with his sword up and he's like glowing red and i'm like are you are you gonna hit me you're gonna hit me and then he just like nothing personnels me and he stood behind me and my guy just collapses and i'm like oh, what the fuck i don't understand what you want from me there and they do it in bosses in boss fights too and like they'll do like this guy will only use this move at the last 20 percent of his second health bar and then if you don't the only way to know it is to die to it so it's like it, it starts to feel really cheap where it's just like you're just chucking but like bullshit at me now just to like pad yeah. the length of this game or something because ah uh, yeah that really well i feel like Sekiro, but... Sekiro did it really well where i feel like Sekiro was also a blocking game right and mm -hmm. like parrying but from what i remember uh, a lot of Sekiro was lots of little hits they had to time sequentially yeah. instead of what i've had so far again with my little bit of time with this game is here comes one massive hit, perfect yeah. block it, or you know, you just take a shitload of damage. Yeah. And like some of the movesets suddenly become they just become like what's the what's the fighting game term? Like 50-50s where okay, like a mix up. Yeah, the guy will like he'll like swing his sword, right? So yeah. you block it and then you go to hit. But psych, he's actually got a second hit that he just pulls out maybe half the time. Yeah, just so, like random. A lot of the fight is like you block one hit and then you both stand there looking at each other and it's like, are you going to do the hit? Are you going to do it? <laughs> and then sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. And it's very frustrating. Yeah. Um, That's, yeah. It's, you just, like, in, that, in terms of like, if that ever happens in a fighting game, um, a lot of times you just have to essentially prepare for the worst every yeah. time because yeah. it doesn't matter if he can or he can't do it, or if he will or he won't, you have to prepare for, like, if he is going to do it, if he can. Yeah. Well, that's, but that's how, and that's how you have to approach it here, but that means, like, you lose I'm using a great sword, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't, that means I don't get a go, and then he launches into his next 15-hit combo, yeah. and I, I just have to stand there getting well done. Um, so that's, like, my frustrations with the end of this game. The good stuff I really like is it does have the, like, Bloodborne mid-game twist, where it changes from you know, puppets into something else, which yeah. I quite, which I liked. Um, but it still felt grounded enough to where, like, I I enjoyed the stories of the characters, and your character feels it feels like they have consequences in the world. That's cool. And the world is like a real lived-in place still, even by the end of the game. To where there's they do a tease right at the end of this game for. DLC or the next game or something, and lies of Q. It's not like lies of yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but it's very it's it's cool. Um, and they, it's it's not like Dark Souls where the end of by the end of Dark Souls you're just fighting God in some like end of the world yeah ruined world city thing where it's like I don't really know what's happening. Um. I'm trying to restart humanity or maybe end humanity or something like that. And here it's just like, no, nah, there's a guy, he's doing some bad stuff. You should probably stop him. And then you do, and that's the end of the game. You know, that's the end of the game. And the world carries on. And there's like I kinda like it, that. It doesn't feel like you're scrabbling around and everything's fucked up and nothing matters because everyone's dead anyway. It's like, no, there are stakes here because people yeah. there are people that you like, there are characters that you care about. And um yeah, it's good. I get, it's good. I get, I get that Dark Souls has a lot of deep lore when you dive into it, and it does all make sense, obviously. But again, as someone that kind of plays these games once, and I don't 
go on Varty Vidya's YouTube channel every five minutes when the game just yeah. ends ambiguously and kind of anticlimactically half the time. I'm a bit like, oh, yeah. I kind of yeah. wish there was some kind of closure, at least for me, the average player. Yeah, I, I think it's. I think I said this last time we recorded when I played a bit of it, but it's like the crat, the city feels like a real. Yes. Where, yeah. Like it's like expansive enough that it's like, well, there's plenty of people about. Um, so not everyone is dead. It's just like a well. It's like a city in crisis almost. Whereas something like a an Elden Ring is like, what? Why am I even trying to save here? There's not. There's like. <laughs> yeah. He's welcome like, welcome he's to like, the land of ash. This is a big ash yes, field. Yeah. <laughs> it's like next. Here's next to it is a field on fire. Uh, exactly, and here are, yeah, some, exactly. and here are some houses next to that. It's like, motherfucker, no one lives here. Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that carries through the whole game, and it's and I I really liked that. Um, so yeah, everyone should play Lies of P. That still good, great game. Yeah. Well, this um, we haven't got a ton of time for news, so we'll just do like one little thing quickly. We'll talk about which kind of is like it's like news combined with something that we have played, which is. There's a lot of word on the street right now about Counter Strike Two. Um, mm-hmm. If you remember, l- literally last podcast we were doing, we were waiting for it to come out. We were doing like countdown, we're like any second now it's going to come out. I think it came out like four or five hours after, or was it? What was it like eleven, twelve p.m. or something? Ooh, like midnight. Yeah, it yeah. It was about midnight. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've been playing a bit of that. Right, like sort of intermittently jumping back in. Um, it's great. It is. It's really great. I think it's having its issues, and a lot of people are upset about it right now, which we'll go into in a second, I guess. Um, but just in terms of kind of reinvigorating Counter Strike, I think it's done a fairly good job. I feel like personally, yeah. like it's definitely given it like from a, a, a casual perspective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is fantastic. Yes. Uh, I I don't really can't put my words into why, but it it does feel better as a casual shitter. But it <laughs> feels better and easier. Mm. A casual play. shitter, yeah. Yeah. I think Counter Strike is kind of timeless, right? I mean, it's an FPS with what like twenty plus years of iteration and refinement at this point. Like it just it feels mean good. By timeless. I think if you've never played it before, people might struggle to jump in. Yeah, I do still think. I, th- I think they might fix this going forward, but I, I, yeah, I do still think the new player experience for Counter Strike is pretty horrible, um, because it's yeah. because it's been out for so long, um, and it hasn't really changed. You have mm. all these legacy players that just know the intricacies of the shooting. Like, we don't play a ton of Counter-Strike, right? Like, we're not pros. Mm. But mm. but we know how it plays. We know the uniqueness of Counter-Strike. It was like, so, I think, we were talking to Steve, yeah. and we were like, Steve, why, you need to stand still when you shoot. Stop running and shooting. Why are you running and shooting? And he's like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, you you are completely correct. Like, yeah, like why would you know? Why, yeah. why, why yeah. would you we know? Told that? him yeah. how to like jump onto things. He's got a crouch mid jump. Exactly. Legs yeah. Up. It's like he's like how how is anyone ever supposed to know this if you didn't yeah. exactly That's, play Valve game? That, up? The, explaining the crouch walk to people after having done it since I was a child is like <laughs> yeah. it's like learning. It's like finding out someone doesn't know how to swim or something. You know? It's just yeah. Like, wow. What? How? Because <laughs> that's how you got a little bit more height in Half Life One. Yeah, it makes sense. You jump and you pull your legs up. Yeah. Like, how do you jump? So I, I do still think it needs uh, maybe not like a tutorial, but it needs like a single player component or something to ease people in. I feel because there's because well, yeah, some kind of training mode or something. I don't know. No, I- I think I honestly think the deathmatch and the ten v ten casual fulfil that. I don't know do if they not, do I, like, those those my, games lobbies have players in them that know how to play that game, and you just get you get yeah. domed every yeah, two but, seconds. So it's ones where there's so many people that like you're gonna get your fights to learn how to play a lot 
so quick. But yeah, but, but I think the especially issue, in that death match mode. But the issue is, is I think, is if you're playing okay, so, again, say a new player is playing. I'd use Steve just because he's not played Counter Strike before, and we were talking with him. He he joins this right. He starts playing this game on his own. He hasn't got any of us to tell him what to do. He's playing on his own. He he, he plays nothing but death match, like you're describing, and sometimes he gets kills. Sometimes he doesn't when he's moving and shooting, and he has no clue why. He's not told to like stand still to increase accuracy. He's not told uh, don't yeah, crouch as a trap. It's 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 just like I, all these little legacy I mean, cr- things. That- crouching is like it's it's not a trap, but like <laughs> it, crouching is it a is, choice. Okay. But then like you see all the pro players crouch, but like that that's a different discussion. But it's like. If you're playing with the default settings, like you will recognize that, like, hey, while I'm moving, why is my crosshair fucking huge? You know? Oh, okay. I didn't think. Didn't think why about is it that. so yeah. small now that I'm not moving? Because like, uh, it, you've already changed your crosshair to a dot. That's literally what it is. I have a dot crosshair, like immediately as <laughs> yeah, soon as I play. Of course you will. But someone playing the game for the first time. Yeah. Right? Because I know those intricacies. No, no don't, they don't get yeah. told, but it. it Th- I, there are ways to figure yeah, this shit yeah, but out. I see what Josh is saying. Where there, there's not uh, Counter Strike's one of those like easy to learn, hard to master, right? But I yeah. still feel like they don't even do the bare minimum of teaching you. Like, look, there's two bomb sites. You can attack either one. You, yeah, like, you, maybe stop moving to shoot. Uh, this is the orb. It's very powerful. Don't try and one v one and all basically. all they have now oh. they have yeah you have the whole economy system and buying guns doesn't tell you anything about it as you hover over the guns they now have difficulty stars next to them and yeah. all the pistols are like one and two difficulty and all the rifles are three and four which is just like <laughs> it just like makes no sense as a yeah. new player yeah. i'd be like oh I'll, I'll, I'll stick with the pistols for a <laughs> what's bit the, what's the scout saying it's probably like three or four. Like I think, 11. I, think oh, right. the, I think the scout is like three and the orp is four. Despite. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Are you this... ready for a take that. Uh, always. Probably. Yeah, always. Yeah. <laughs> probably. I need a title for the podcast. Let's go. Agree or this or that. It's not going to be that bad. But this game has been out so long. Yeah. Like Counter Strike, that oh, yes. it doesn't need a tutorial because it's got so much content already out there. And we live in a time where you can just, you are a click away from finding anything you need to know oh, about this okay. game. Out. Okay. I hate this because this is the exact problem, what you're describing, that fighting games had for literally decades where it was always like a new player being like how do i learn this fighting game how do i get better at, you know street fighter 4 there's not it's not many tutorials in game or anything how do i get better and it's like i'll go watch a shit ton of youtube and stuff and it's like oh i just don't care then because i'm not watching youtube today. i just won't bother i just won't bother i don't th- i don't think that's a good I- answer to fix these problems it should be in game this valve it's their flag it- this is their flagship game now this is what yeah. makes them all their money it should have everything in the world to introduce new players this should have launched with tutorials with ai setups you know like here's here's a setup you can just load into like a retake of a site you're going to experience this a lot when you play practice it against bots it should have tons of stuff like that i I just feel like it doesn't i don't think it needs that at all because you're not a new player but, like okay so first of all comparing it to like the the fighting game thing yeah like the the player gap between those that how many people have played counter strike and how many people play fighting games is huge that's yeah that is okay that is true but i think it's yeah um, I'll, I'll let you talk i'll let you talk no i completely understand what you get and what what you're saying and why you're saying it and i i agree that like it could have that but this game is just on such a scale that, like, if you're a new player to Counter Strike, that probably means you're young. Yeah, but then I just is that is that not why Counter Strike Two exists? Is to but, is to reestablish that Counter Strike yeah. is around, and we want because if Counter Strike Go is the only game forever, 
you've got to think about the options players have now. They can play Overwatch 2, they can play Fortnite, they can play this out the other. This is such a great opportunity to reinvent the whole thing and bring in younger people that don't that, know Counter-Strike. I think the fact... Uh, I do not think they are attempting to do any reinventing whatsoever. I don't, the fact okay, that yeah, this yeah. has come out... Like, reinvent's the wrong word. It's, like, it's the wrong word, yeah. Reinvigorate, yeah. Reinvent's the wrong word. Because this is Counter-Strike. Like, we know that. This is not... Despite the big two attached to the end, this is not a sequel. This is an Overwatch 2. This is... Re- it's almost like a, it's a reset point yes. where a lot of people will look at it and go, oh, so... I can jump in at the very start, even though realistically all of those people are still going to be decades behind because it's yes. exactly the same game. Yeah. In people's minds, it'll be, oh, I should give this a go because this is new. At so, some like, point, trying to catch an yeah. audience. At that. some point, the audience that plays Counter Strike, like at a higher level, which are going to be older players compared to Fortnite players and Overwatch players, <laughs> are just going to stop playing. And then what? Like Counter Strike just dies? Like obviously, I'm you know this is very dramatic, but yeah, I I think for me it's just in my head when I think of the player count for Counter Strike. Yeah, like you you always need new players, no matter how big you are, you always need yes, new yeah. players. But I just uh, but yeah, I feel like that the the game just sorts itself out, like. But I think I okay, I had come at it from the angle that I tried to play Counter Strike a lot. When I was a, when I was younger, but I don't think I ever properly played Counter Strike. If that makes sense, I played a lot of like stuff maps. I know what you mean. Like, yeah, uh, I don't know whatever gun game a lot and stuff like that. And I didn't, I didn't get why people that I was like five v five. Bob, I don't understand why anyone would find that fun. And I think that's my problem is the game doesn't do a really good job of convincing you like, hey, five v five, two bomb sites, and that's it. That and there's so much fun to be had there. It's such a great game yeah. once you once it like clicks. But the game does zero work explaining why you should care about that sort of thing. Um, yeah, to the just... point where I'm actually annoyed that CS2 is back to like we were inviting people. Like it's like CS2 CS2 launch day. Let's let's get in. We'll show you like some lineups and we'll do some strats and will explain to you why CS2 is uh, Counter Strike is such a fun time with friends, and then we were forced to play like 10v10 casual or 15v15 casual, <laughs> yeah. whatever the fuck it was, or deathmatch. And it's like neither of those things are the way are uh, why people have played Counter Strike for you know an ungodly amount of why there's so many people playing Counter Strike. Yeah. They're not playing 10v10 casual or deathmatch. Yeah, the but... 5v5 is the mode, and it it doesn't it doesn't even let you play it when you start. Well, it's like it's well, like playing yeah, League of Legends for the first time, people. and League of Legends is like you know all you can play when you first start League is some weird ten v ten mode. Okay, right. yeah. So I, I agree that there should be like a casual five v five mode. Yeah, but it locking new accounts out of playing ranked is a very standard thing, right? But that but ranked is the only way to properly play Counter Strike. I'm saying the same thing as you. I want there needs to be like unranked. Or here's the other Counter Strike. Oh, same, yeah, yeah. same way there needs to be a tutorial to introduce why you should care about. <laughs> or, uh, or here's ranked or unranked. Here's, here's the kicker: is that Counter Strike Global Offensive had an unranked mode. Yeah, it did. Yeah, which Counter Strike Two does not have. Which is where a lot of people's annoyances are coming from. Going from the old game to this one, where for as nice as it looks, this that and the other. Um, there's still a lot missing. It's the Overwatch 2 issue again, where you go from one to the other, and it's like you have removed things that I like. Yeah. And I, and, and, yeah. Yeah. And like for us, it's not so bad because we can still do ranked. We yes, can still yeah. play 5v5, the competitive mode. And not a lot has changed other than like, you know, oh, there is some wonkiness. Go, there is some wonkiness spread about in this mode. But the game looks great. It sounds great. Um, and it's the Counter Strike that, like, I remember, and everything still kind of works the way it used to, and it's still really fun. Um, but I just, I no, I'm, I agree. I think they need to, to do a better job of like onboarding. Why should you care about yeah. CS2 in 2023 when there's so many other shooters about? Because you like, can see it, right? It's like you go on Twitch and you see tournaments for Counter Strike with millions of viewers, with teams uh, competing for millions and millions of dollars, and it's like why? 
you know, it's two bomb sites and a couple of guns. Like, why is it so? It's like, like obviously, something is here, right? You can see that a lot of people enjoy it. Um, I and, like it's different, mate. And yeah, I to, don't want to yeah. go in circles, but yeah, it, I just don't feel like it onboards people very well. And I was, I was kind of hoping that this would maybe have something. But the other, well. just spending a little bit of dev time on a, like a little tutorial, like it doesn't have to be crazy. Just, just yeah. explain simple things like you don't. That's that's it. It's, it's like hard. it's like Counter Strike's not that complicated. Once you've got a hang of the the movement and the shooting, it's like you, you, and the economy. It's like yeah, yeah. You kind of yeah, you can learn by doing for the rest of it. But hmm. Global Offensive had AI single player content at one point. You and I have played it, Will. We have gone we against. Did. I remember that. We have that gone through a Call of Duty level in Counter Strike <laughs> made by Valve. Yeah, like it exists somewhere. They can do it, but for I some think, reason, yeah. I think that's the biggest problem with this launch has been it. They made a big song and dance about CS2, but they there was no. If you're not in for Counter Strike, they didn't really do a good job of like. Here's why you should come play Counter Strike, yeah. right? There was yeah. no, there's no like, there's no, I, I don't want th this isn't like a main thing, but there's no like, there's no battle pass, um, there's no big new feature that you can point at and say like, you should come to check this out. It's brand new. We've we, everyone should try this. It's just like, no, it is kind of the same game. So to play, <laughs> so to, so to, so to play, really. to play devil's advocate then for Valve, is this the community at large and us? getting excited for something we thought it would be when it, they never intended it to be that we're like this would be such a good entry point for new players but valve don't care about that right now they literally yeah, was, just want to port the game say, to source 2 that's all they wanted to yeah. do um so it's, just, it's, it's us getting excited not excited but like expectations for no reason there's an argument as well with the amount of numbers that this is doing that like th 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 Again, I said it earlier, they every game needs new players, but like they don't have to care. They don't. They, sh they should, some, but they don't have to. They should, yeah. And like that for them, I would not be surprised if it's just that uh, all of that shit can just come later. Because all we need are the yeah. people that have played Counter Strike before. If if, if someone who has never played Counter Strike before, they do not have to care about. Yeah. Because I of, guess, yeah. As Weird as it sounds, the the player base is just too big for them to care. It seems it's one of those things which just seems like you you are complete. I completely agree with what you're saying. It's just like we just want to port the player base over, but sh but surely someone internally, you know, devs must be like, is this not a really good time to add a whole <laughs> bunch of things that would be really good long term for the game? Like you can't tell me yeah. no one is thinking that in the office no, but, correct but there you don't know how much talk as well they're of like okay but do we need to have that immediately from the get-go or do we just need to get this out like they closed csgo on the day that this came out so <laughs> yeah. in my head i'm like were they were they on a clock like, is that why it's come out? An internal clock yeah. they've set for themselves. <laughs> I, I, I genuinely don't know, because yeah, that's, that was the weirdest thing, is they turned CSGO off mid-tournament. Yeah. Which is yes. such a weird <laughs> thing to do, that I'm like... You, was, don't, you don't do that. It's so, it's so watch that. Yeah. I was watching that. It was uh, two teams, their game had gone to... Um, oh, they were in a best of three, and they were like, if this team wins the second the team that won the first game if they win the second game it, it's fine they're within time <laughs> if but if they don't we have to go to the third map which and then they voted on whether they were moving over to counter strike 2 or global offensive or sticking with global offensive they voted to stay and then every all the commentators everyone playing was just like god imagine playing counter strike global <laughs> offensive in 2020 <laughs> it was so fucking funny um yeah, yeah, one one thing, um, one thing that's like weirded me out is a lot of people are talking about this like, it, it, oh, we have to move to CS two at some point, so let's rip off that band aid now. And that I kind of feel like, isn't that just? <laughs> why shouldn't this be just like, fuck yeah, it's Counter Strike two time, you know? Why are we all like, oh well, let's get this over with, let's move over. <laughs> yeah. to CS2. Overwatch two was a thing, and we saw a band that went. 
I don't think the I don't think the player base with you know the average player having two thousand hours played is like if Counter Strike Two isn't out tomorrow, I'm gone. Like I'm pretty yeah. sure he's, he's still going to play yeah. tomorrow. He's still going to play the day after. <laughs> like I, yeah, it just I don't, something happened ha- had to have been happening behind the scenes. Well, the stuff, it, yeah. that's just that's to me is such a bad decision. Or well, the stuff I, happening, I can't yeah. play devil's advocate for. Isn't it? Hasn't it can, just gone? I was just gonna say I can normally put up an argument for most things, even if I don't agree with it. I can put up an argument for something, yeah. but with that. Nothing. I've I got can, nothing. I can only assume it's just like because obviously content takes long to make, right? If they want to make stuff for Counter Strike, maybe they came across something that they want to really want to do with this that they just couldn't do on the old Hammer Engine mm. with CS:GO. So it's like, okay, we need CS2 up and running so we can finally make I don't know what, what was the da- we want to make Danger Zone Danger Two. Danger Zone Two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because what, like the original, the original, if anyone doesn't know, don't blame if you don't know, Danger Zone was the Counter-Strike global offensive uh, battle royale made on an engine that was designed to be rooms and corridors. Yeah. And it was just like falling apart at the it seams. It was so janked together. Yeah. The fact they made it work at all is insane. Yeah. Um, I can only assume that's, that, that might be what it is. They're like, we want to do something, yeah. we need this shit on Source 2. And yeah, and the weird thing is they it was in closed beta, and they had loads of people in and testing it and stuff. And they were doing like play sessions and weekends and stuff. And I and and nobody was like, nobody was like, like you said, everybody who was not in was just happy yeah. going along Everyone's playing mobile offensive. And everyone who was in the CS2 was like, yeah, a bit shit, but it'll be good when it all clears up. And now it feels like we're in this weird spot where everyone's like, <laughs> everyone's mad. All the marketing for CS2. <laughs> Was like, bro, Counter Strike's back. We're celebrating. What a you know, twenty years of Counter Strike. We're back, baby. And it's just everyone's just like everyone who's played. It's like, yeah, it's all right. Bit jank, isn't it? But <laughs> yeah, the people that have returned, like us, are like, yeah, it's cool. It's just Counter Strike. Like pros are annoyed <laughs> because there's there's a couple of bugs and yeah. problems where it's like we don't care. But when your what career is terminals. this game, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I think. What will end up happening is all these problems will get fixed, but we probably won't still be playing this game at that point. So they'll just go completely over our heads. Yeah, that's no. uh, that's it. That's like I at the moment I'm in a. I really enjoy Counter Strike, but I could take or leave it. I've got a lot of things to play. We've still been playing yeah. Siege a little bit on the yep. side, and I'm still really enjoying that. And I feel like there's another timeline where Counter Strike Two comes out with it all these dominates new features, and it just completely sweeps everything else and like resets the board almost. You know because yeah. it's just that it's because because the game is still there it's still really fucking good it's still counter strike it's amazing yeah Yeah. when someone drops cs2 question mark (laughs) it's all i want to do yeah it's all i want to do even if i've got plans and i'm like i'm sorry i can't that fucker's (laughs) ruined my day because it's now all i want to do i just remember the the first game coming back and playing cs2 and just literally like the first few rounds and getting like a kill being like oh yeah I remember. Okay. Now. I remember now. Yeah, it's like wearing a really we old, a f- comfortable pair of shoes. It's like, oh, it's yeah, just, yeah. The first time me and Sam did like a B hold on Mirage, just the two of us, and <laughs> oh it was like, it was god. like, oh my god, we're so fucking back, baby. Yeah. This feels so good. <laughs> so, I still do hate the fact they have like the level requirements to do the different stuff. Like it's yeah. it's putting yeah. me off so much. Like I could, I wasn't free to play Counter Strike Two when it first came out. So now it's like if I want to play with everyone else, it's like yeah, grind to level five so you can do the whatever key. Yeah, it's stupid. I just it's really stupid. I I'm, I'm not going to go and play it on my own. So just never. I don't play know it. why your account needs to though, because we played before. Because it saved mine, Josh's, Will's levels. Yeah, I'm, mine's all saved from. It was like only new Prime, account, Prime state. Is it like a hard reset your account, Matt? I haven't. I haven't tried logging in because literally people just kept saying, "Oh, I need to grind up my level." Right. Okay. Yeah. Like I even know. even um, oh, Chris, oh, you would yeah. probably be alright. Yeah, if you played before, you'll be, you'll be fine. Yeah. Thanks before. Yeah. Look, yeah. No, no. Um, our friend Chris had got hard reset, so it's that's not guaranteed. Weird, yeah. Oh, that is weird. That that's. I think that was probably the big person that Matt was hearing it from. Yeah. So that's not that's not right though because he should he should also be fine. That sounds like a bug. Or yeah, something. we we I'm like we've played more than enough games with yeah. Matt. I know yeah. the man. 
No, I've never played Counter Strike before. <laughs> Give it a boot. Just have a quick look. I'm hey, just a really big train enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> Train's not in this one. No, is it's it? not. No. no. But I've I've seen it in the trailer. No, nope. like, as be... I've been watching Josh streaming, <laughs> I could it see be... it. Sorry, Matt. You're going crazy. Out of their like active group or whatever <laughs> it is. Yeah. All right, let's. That, it's annoying as well watching all these really cool maps flip by, and I'm like, none of these are available in the fucking game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Coming soon at some point, maybe if you're lucky. I we... guarantee that they're all done. They're all fine. They're just like going to artificially create hype by releasing them. Oh god, yeah, yeah. We'll release them slowly and to, uh, to release to... cash and be like, <laughs> "Hey, you guys want this?" And everyone goes, "Fuck off." You guys like boxes? <laughs> yeah. We'll slowly release all these maps so that all our new players we've got in can have tons of nougat. Oh, and everyone's gone. <laughs> they've all they've all moved on. To... No, no, they they <laughs> Valve couldn't kill Counter Strike if they tried at this point. I don't think. No, the old players are still there. They'll they'll enjoy a new version of Cash. Yeah, but Steve, yeah, the playing. old casual 1.5 million concurrent players. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about this game dead as if game, like dead game, mate. Yeah. how will Counter Strike possibly yeah, survive? <laughs> that's the yeah. issue. To not to not go around in circles and just give a closing comment on it. Yeah. It's like if you're thinking about playing this, chances are you're gonna play it with friends, so you'll be fine. Like I I don't think there are people out there that are like I I have no one to play Counter Strike 2 with, but I want to get into Counter Strike 2. Uh, you know I, mean? I don't know about that. I think there's quite a few people that would love to pick up Counter Strike 2. No... What Sam is saying is at him on X. Yeah, Sam com, will play Counter Strike. He will play with you. Yeah. yeah. Go, send him a tweet saying CS2 question mark and, <laughs> and he will he will play with you. All right, I'm, I'm going to right, start wrapping this up. Um, no more time for news, so we'll just go straight into new releases for next week. Next week is uh, absolutely banging for releases. There's two big ones. You have. Um, Super Mario Bros. Wonder comes out Ooh. on the Friday. That's the 20th. Uh, I cannot wait for this. Like, you just want to be an elephant, don't you? I just want to be a big elephant. Um, <laughs> the more I hear about this game, like news releases and stuff, I, I, I'm going on Blackout now. It sounds like they're doing some really cool stuff with like the overworlds and stuff. So, And I love a good 2D Mario game. Like, I haven't had one for ages now. So I always get excited for these. Um, and the other big one is the exact same day and it is spider-man 2 that comes out on the exact same day yes. on ps5 i'm still trying to work out what i'm going to play first spider-man or mario i haven't decided yet but that's wait that and then on podcast launch day is lords of the fallen oh sh that? I've... i completely missed that <laughs> just saying as well lords of the fallen looks so good like yeah. it looks like Oh shit! Yeah, I, I was right. watching some gameplay. It looks like Dark Souls three. Like it looks like it plays and handles like Dark Souls three. I yeah, this is like excited. this is a game. I completely forgot this was coming out. This is a game that aesthetically I think looks incredible, but I'm not convinced it won't have some kind of jank yet. I want it yeah, to come well, yeah, to Game yeah. Pass, and then I will play the crap out <laughs> yeah. of it. You know, I'm like, I'm like I don't want to pay however much this costs. Could you please just put it on the Game Pass? The reason it's I be hard as well because yeah. normally there's like one big Souls like a year, right? That everyone talks about. This time mm. we just I back just to back Lies of P, and it, you know, oh, yeah. it, it's going to be going directly up against Lies that's, of P. For that's like, why I benched the this. best Souls born of 2023. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why I benched this because I was like, well, I'll just play Lies of P. Like Lies of P yeah. is the safe bet because it's out, yeah. and I know it's good. And then if this is also good, I'll play it in like a few months or something. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this is yeah, this is on the thirteenth. So yeah, uh, podcast release day. Um, this will be out. Are you playing this, Matt? Did you say? Sorry, I missed that. Did you say you were playing this? No, nah, I'm not going to pay full price for it unless. What is it? Yeah, fifty quid, forty nine nine nine. I might get it if it ends up being like crazy good. Yeah, right? and people yeah. are like really singing its praises. But I'm going to wait because I I did the same thing with Cyberpunk. The Cyberpunk 2077 was coming out and I was like, I'm going to get this day one. And I was like, no, I'm going to hold off. Just give it a few days. See what people are saying. <laughs> and I'm glad I did. And then I got it like 70% <laughs> off whatever the sale. So I was happy I did that. G give me an open critic average score that would convince you to buy this. What is crazy good in the world of tomato sauce? Like, like I'm talking like 9 out of 10s across the board. Like, like average, 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 average 90 out of 100. Like, yeah, I'm talking like, like people are like, this is the best souls like since like Elden Ring. Yeah. Oof. Okay. That's that's like, that, that's what <laughs> that's very high. Yeah. It's, it's, 
You've got to remember, I don't go out and way to buy games very often, right? That's why I like yeah. getting things on sale. I like none of us things. do anymore. Yeah, I, so I, I, yeah, I, I, I actually don't rent spend everything. Fifty quid because the other thing is, I, if this is a game, I'm just going to sit there and play through once. Fifty quid for like what twenty hour game? Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I imagine. I don't know when it is. I the review embargo can't be far, so we'll see. Yeah, how I mean, it people goes. have been playing it on Twitch. Like, I think uh, it's tomorrow. Stuff, so. is, is it tomorrow? People play it on Twitch. Must already be out. I have to have a look at that later. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Then. Some people play it. They're cool. We'll wrap this up then, and we'll we'll call it a night. Thank you for listening, everybody, and thank you, Matt, for coming on. It's always fun yeah. having you here. Um, you are streaming now on Twitch along with your YouTube stuff. Do you want to plug your stuff really quick? I'm loving your stuff right now. I want you to plug it. I do. I I am Tomato Sauce on YouTube and Twitch, and I make Rush Duel contents. Usually now the Duel Link stuff. It's really That's chill. Cool. I love your streams. Just like chilling out. and mm, Yeah, I like your streams, man. I never understand what's going on. Uh, <laughs> but I always, I always like it. That's right, so. you can learn. I'll teach you. We'll have private <laughs> sessions. If only they had some kind of tutorial, right? <laughs> we'll get those Someday. new Yu-Gi-Oh players. They yeah, actually, yeah. It's actually quite funny. There's a similarity here where in order to play Rush Duel on Duel Links, you have to play through the Speed Duel tutorial. So if you're just there to play <laughs> one game, you have to learn the other game first. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I have no socials these days. How about you, Will? Yeah, I mean, everybody knows my <laughs> socials, so... Yeah, it's uh, Olive underscore Meister. You can find him on Twitch, YouTube, and everywhere else. And what about you, Sam? Yeah. I'm about. <laughs> Make sure, yeah, find Sam on Twitter and then ask him about CS2. He'll We're definitely... like the Sam... most unfindable podcast on the <laughs> know, platform. Yeah. Sam, <laughs> Sam was actually featured on my stream on Thursday. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. He beat me. Well, yeah, it's not hard. Live on your own stream. <laughs> yeah. So he's never coming back. Yeah, he's banned now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say that, but on the actual tournament, which had money on the line on the weekend, Matt beat me. Oh, no, out, he choked. So... <laughs> choked when it mattered. <laughs> you, do you stream the tournaments? Uh, I don't, just because the tournaments run till like midnight. So, like, oh, it depends. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and they try and have man. time for everyone. Yeah, we tried to do there's, stuff. There's another series of big tournaments that I'd like to play in, but they start at 2 a.m. because they oh, are like God. at evening America, and I'm like, I'm not. Staying up, not to like six. For, for you go. <laughs> CBA with that. All right, yeah. Make sure you catch Matt on Twitch and on his YouTube. Uh, as for everybody else, we're going to head off now. So bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, bye, bye everyone. Bye. bye. Goodbye.